while no sane, compassionate individual would excuse the atrocities committed by this man. Neither would any sane individual applaud the passing of this funeral hearse. Takes response. Boy, do you have some nerve taste. Boy. And I know, 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 I know you're going to read this because I, I, I know you're going to read this because I'm going to tag the shit out of you. Because anytime I make a video and I tag the shit out of a, out of, out of, out of, out of a person, I will get this video to you. Video to you. Video to you. Born Betty and Chronicles of Olivia. I want you to know that my friends here, Justin, that my friends here, Justin, your just friends here, just friends, has been sitting there for over a month, over a month, over a month, going over detail, 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 detail. Watching the news. Go ahead, tell her what you want to say to her. Rock. I'm your host for the cringe that you're about to witness. We've been covering, as you know, people that have exploited tragedies in order to make money. Different than people reporting on tragedies or covering them in a documentary fashion or giving their opinions or thoughts, when people actually tell you something or have a purpose for what they put out, we're talking about people that act cringy, they pretend to be reporters, they pretend that they're giving you valuable information, when in reality, they're giving you nothing uh, but insane amounts of misinformation. Fake news, lies, garbage, and oh my lord, there's so much going on, I had to go live early. I just got an upload over to Unirock2, my main channel. I don't know if one of my mods will share the link to that uh, video in the chat for me. Make sure if you do me a solid, I haven't been uploading a lot, and I'm I'm uploading more now. Go over there and watch it and stuff for me. Leave a comment, interact with it, do what you want. If you want to support me, also make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to go even further with that, support this show through paypal.me forward slash unirock. Because, you, you know, it'll keep me pumping out this content. So we, I don't want to, I don't want to ramble. I don't want to give you a lot. We need to get straight into this. The first topic we've got, I came in. And I was finishing an edit. I needed to really uh, rework my edit a little bit. I wasn't happy with it. I got it up. I think it's great. Navy and I went over some stuff leading into the Idaho situation on Unirock 2. It's up now. Um, and Menace came in and told me what happened last night. And I just literally, I'll give you a sum up, but it's just too much, man. So the first thing is that Michelle Sabate, or however you say her last name, she decided to go live, and while she was nodding out for God knows what reason, like, she had a piece of toast. Like, I'm not making this up. She had a piece of toast in her hand, and she thought that the piece of toast was her phone, and that she was texting people on the piece of toast 
while she was losing and then coming back in and losing and coming back into consciousness. So we're going to take a look at that later because more importantly, Bullhorn Betty, as you know, I've been taking a, a look at her lately. Uh, the the 41 count uh, injurer and beater upperer and choker outer of people, even though she's a criminality reporter now, uh, has decided that she's going to be the first and only source that I can find for a very new audio clip that it seeks for her to monetize. I guess she's hoping to go viral and monetize an audio clip that has the screaming and the terror of the night that we've been, uh, you know, that's been fueling the videos that we've been looking at the night in Idaho, the four people that lost, uh, had the bad, bad issue happen to them. And so uh, now while I will probably try to very, uh, I might only play very, very small portions of whatever audio she claims to have. The first thing I want to say is while I believe that the audio could be real, I don't believe that the source of this audio is real the way that Bullhorn Betty has attained it. Um, I don't like the flow of information. She claims that it's a doorbell recording um, from a neighbor. You know, the doorbell cams, those little doorbell cams that you can buy that will record and send to your phone if someone is standing at your front door. It's a doorbell and a camera built in. Now, the problem we have there is I don't see that many doorbell cams that actually record audio. And um, it's kind of strange for her to claim that she has audio from that cam. And maybe she does. I'm not saying she doesn't. That's just the first thought that went through my head. Though, she claims that she's got this audio. It's from the night. It's from a neighbor. And that she's the source. She's the one that's breaking it and bringing it to you. Um, now, of course, the entire time she plays it, she can't even turn off her... You know, if you're going to report on something this just crazy big or bad. And no, I'm not saying in general some type of murmur or situation i just mean if you're gonna break this kind of leaked audio or something you'd think you'd be a little more like have some tact about it i i don't know you, we'll have to look when we get there but as where it sits right now we are going to verify the audio source we're going to do everything we can to get the information of the audio source i've already um taken steps to analyze the sound in a very uh the, the actual video or i'm sorry the actual data of the sound the um the uh the the, the wave format of it we're going to go in depth with an uh analyzing the sound in a technical way to get whatever information we can about it so that we can either confirm or debunk the claim that she has uh that she has leaked the audio of the night this this big night of course before we get to the big lady on campus here, MGL, Molly Golightly, the true, cr you know, crime, lie crime, fake crime, community drama, mixing drama in with tragedy to make money and, and try to become rich and famous off the backs of people experiencing these horrible things. I want to make sure we remind you that the news media, the police, and the uh, just the civilians all the way over to the local authorities up and up have been very mindful of people like Bullhorn Betty. Yo, Carla, thank you. Very kind of you. Like Bullhorn Betty, like Molly, and what they're doing in LARPing as reporters or LARPing as protesters. We have what we believe is the beginning of a new protest. We have them laying the groundwork along with Betty and Justin and the whole heels stolen heels on the ground name named crew laying the groundwork for a new protest a new grift and a new family that they're going to attack so today when I react to what Molly's doing and that'll be the first thing we look at right now when I react to what Molly's doing here uh, in targeting the family, the mother of Brian, the Brian is the person in custody for, for the Idaho uh, situation, doing everything I can to behave according to YouTube's 
rules here. Um, of course, she now believes that the mother, the sister, and other family members of Brian, regardless of the fact that he was an adult and that he actually seems like he's not a really young adult, he's not really a child, right? And somehow, we're going to try to process Molly's logic. Molly's already angry at the mother and the father and the sister. She thinks that they're to blame, that they're just horrible people, and she's going to microanalyze not even anything recent from them. She's gone back to 1989, I believe it was. I actually need to go. We'll, we'll look at the exact date here in a minute. But she's gone back to taking something that was posted by this woman, the mother, yeah, in 1989, when Bundy had been finalized and was driven in a hearse, and her opinion about how people were celebrating this, you know, cheering and applauding and celebrating and how inappropriate it was, according to her, was posted by the mother of the Idaho situation, Brian's mother. And she thinks that it's the worst thing ever, so we're going to break down literally the 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 thought process behind whether or not the mother is at fault the sister is at fault the father is at fault how much they should be or shouldn't be at fault for what brian's done also what she posted in 89 what she was trying to say is it correct or incorrect does it say anything is it applicable to the situation at all or is this another instance of molly and betty and the rest of their crew and justin all, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention old LB. We got some good new LB content coming soon, too. I won't even go into that right now. But let's just go ahead and roll into this. You know, is it appropriate or are they just taking anything that they can about this situation and trying to spam content and clickbait and grasp onto it without actually making some type of creative or value valued input to what's going on is it exploitative or is it not my opinion you already know it i think these people are exploiting these situations in order to make money through conning people into believing that they are doing something valuable when they aren't and that while they're behaving very unprofessionally while they're attacking people and also we've got an update one of my discord members was telling me uh, that we actually have something that will elaborate on whether Bullhorn Betty spit on a uh, civilian in an area from a video we played a few weeks ago. And it seems as if we may have some more information there, but we're going to get into all of that on an early show right now of Uni Rock Live, days of our live streams, special, special broadcast for you. It is almost 5 p.m. Broadcasting from the East Coast of the glorious United States of America. It's the 7th of January, 2023. And if you want to support me right now, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed and buckle in because it's going to get crazy. Let's go. Sorry about that. Hello, everyone. I'm, um, I apologize. I'm now on the... Look, just the beginning of this, let's go ahead and slow it down to normal speed. Of course, I was, you know, doing my thing. I was scanning it. I was watching it. I was getting it ready for you. And I was doing it at two times speed. But this beginning part, we need at normal. The first. Uh, Peggy says Dolly played the fake audio also. We don't know if it's fake yet. Uh, it does seem very sus. Uh, you know, we'll see. We're definitely going to figure this out. I do think it's a big reason for why we shouldn't trust these people and they shouldn't be allowed to do what they're doing. They've gone too far and they clickbait. They literally can't go and tell you the truth. They can't say, blamed audio. Is this audio real or not? Or like, whatever. They want to basically monetize the living hell out of that audio and lead it right to them so they can profit as much as possible. And not putting a creative um, format in the middle is my issue. Channel, and I wanted to do a video very quickly on something that was sent to me last night. Okay, so first things first, Molly is already getting sent into her. Every tiny thing about Brian and his family, I won't go as far as to say that it's inappropriate yet. Um... He said, I won't. Brian Koberger. Mother.
She is so bad at this. Betty, Justin, LB, Molly all have this in common. Very lazy presentation, no preparation, never ready, dragging it out. A newspaper. You know, if they're gonna actually want to be paid 10 to 20,000 a month, which is what Molly was mad that she didn't make her 18 G's and it went down to like 12, uh, maybe last week or the week before. If, she, if they're going to be mad that they're not getting ex extreme amounts of money for what they do, maybe they should do it professionally to just the most minor extent. Article that she sh I'm just a dude with a computer. It's a very powerful computer, but it's a computer. And my show is 1.16 a billion times more prepared, professional, and respecting to your viewership than anything they put out. Shared in 1989. Now, she's silent right now. Okay, first things first. Her main points are, this post was shared in 1989, and the mother and sister, father, and family of Koberger have gone silent. Number one, they should be silent. They should be. Number two, are they... Is it correct, is it right in any way to attack them? See, the Gabby Petito case with the Laundry family caused a kind of a trend to happen with these people. They started to go after family members in a more direct way than some of their past endeavors. And they found that if they villainize and demonize family members, not the person who did it, not an adult, who must be in his late 20s or, or getting closer to 30. Not the adult. This adult man, person has been living on his own and, and living his life for many years. Somehow, somehow didn't do this to anybody from what we know when he was a child or when he was under the care of the people that he was with. But we now are being told by Molly we must judge the family members literally the mother and father, because they raised them and they must have done something wrong for this person to do what they've done. Now, I'm going to file this under her being just completely ignorant and incompetent when it comes to knowing about crime and psychology and, and blame and ethics and, and just the overarching kind of thought process. While I do think there could be things that happen during a person's youth or childhood, we have seen some murmurers and some people like Brian have had the most perfect upbringings from the worst to the to the best it covers the gambit people that commit these types of actions it covers the gambit you don't just find someone who you can't pinpoint to them having certain things happen because if you know this is like pre-crime this gets into the Topic of pre-crime, and while I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole and bore you to death with it, basically it's a, a, a futuristic kind of thought process that somehow in the future, our civilization, our society will be able to look at the way you behave as a child or the way that you're behaving uh, in, in, in other parts of your life and say that you're going to commit this crime, so you need to be treated as if you've already done it. Right, But it's even worse than that because we're not talking about pre-crime when it comes to Brian. We're acting like that it was the mother and father who somehow did this. You know, I don't know. Like, when it was in the Brian Laundry case, I had a hard time not being mad at the Laundry family or thinking they'd done something wrong. Of course, I felt that way when they protected their son to, to a very small extent before he tried to flee and then go into the woods and do what he did. To himself ending himself uh i did think they made mistakes but why is it that i didn't really blame them real heavily i would have if they would have done more direct things to help him or whatever i blame them only for not informing the petitos and helping them right that's all i blamed them for i know they were in a very hard position and it, i didn't think that brian doing what he did to gabby was a result of the father or a result of the sister or a result of the mother I'm going to let Molly talk a little more, but I want you to think about this concept as we go. Is it proper for us to blame the parents of people that do this? And if it is, then, you know, how much should we blame them? Why aren't we locking them up if Molly's right? If they made some detrimental decision, why aren't they to blame for what he did? 
Are we going to say that he's not to blame now? And this is why we don't go down these thought processes. It's why we don't say without evidence, without proof that they did something wrong. We don't, be I don't believe they have yet. If I'm given evidence they have, I'll believe it, but I haven't seen anything yet that they've done anything more than raise a person who is entitled, spoiled, rotten. You know, maybe could they have done more? Could they have done less? You know, it's hard when you're a parent because you're kind of winging it. You know, this is the thing about being a parent. You go in and you're not an expert at being a parent when you have your first or even second kid. You got to learn. You got to, it's a part of life experiencing these things. I know I'm boring you and I know I'm getting a little bit off topic. Not really, but I'm just saying the thing is, I don't think we should be going in and looking at family members unless they've committed a crime or helped commit the crime or had some kind of aid in part of it and blame them and attack them and go at them because they, in my opinion, are just as much victims of him until we have more information. The mother and father and especially the sister are just as much victims of this horrible monster as many other people are too. No, not the people that he did it to, but the people who are affected and they, they're losing a son in the same way. And until you can tell me exactly why you don't, I am not with you here, Molly. I'm not going to hate people that knew him or were friends with him or were sisters or brothers or even parents. I'm not going to. This is crazy. Now, why do I think Molly's doing this? I think she's doing it because she needs someone to yell at she needs content. She needs something to talk about that she can link to this issue. I do believe that's the sole reason why they do this. Because they don't themselves even tell us why they believe what they believe. Also, I don't know what Navy's doing today, but I just want to make sure he knows he's more than welcome to come in if he can. And make sure that you know. I'm going to share the way you can support my show in the live chat. And now let's let Molly talk. So... Uh, we're going to put him in there. I'm going I'm to show you what this says. So have you heard anything, Justin, about Brian Kohlberger's mother? Yeah, I don't know why you're stalking this woman. She, until you've got a factoid, until you've got a point, until you've got something you can point towards, I don't think she's to blame, and I believe she's as much of a victim as... Uh, other family that are affected by this. And of course, not the people in, that are the most affected. Justin? Uh, is she staying that? quiet? She's staying quiet, um, isn't she? Isn't his parents? I hope they all stay quiet. And I hope that people, until they've got a reason, until you find out they were aiding or that they've done something to actually help or, or, or whatever, I hope you do not stalk or harass the people around that are related to Brian. With, and like I said, I hope you don't harass them for any reason, but I'm just saying, I hope you don't target them and go at them without a good reason. Go, you know, the, they are, in my opinion, um, until we're given some, some overarching point, also uh, affected by this. I'm staying right? quiet. Pretty I hope much, I said yeah. that okay. Oh yeah, yeah, she's staying quiet? Okay, well I'm gonna show you guys something. It's crazy to me that Molly is normalized getting mad at the family members. It just blows my what mind. Sent to me last night. They're innocent people. You do get this, Molly. This is why people think you're a monster, right? Without you being able to give us something to make them not innocent, to, to justify how you treat them, we just look at you as a monster, right? You get that. Okay. All right. So this was sent to me last night, and I'll put this up. Brian Koberger's mother actually put something out here we go this is important first off we need to look at what she actually put out which should be diff it should be separated from everything else so let's take a look in the newspaper uh-oh uh-oh navy said that he's on his way home thank you ozzy trisha i just want navy to know that if he's you know able to jump in he's welcome to when he gets back you know in 1989 and it because we're gonna get into some good stuff here after we get warmed up is printed 89. It goes back to... First point. Why do we look at something she posted in 1989 and make it related to this for any reason other than you're desperate for content, you're desperate to talk about something? I don't get it. The Daily News, February 16th, 1989. On if it had been in the 2000s or, or later, maybe, maybe. No, I would say late 90s. No, I'm going to go with 2000s or later, maybe. I, she could have just changed her opinion since then. 
The world's changed. The way we handle things have changed. How do we know she feels the same way? Like, how do we know that, you know, this is a different person. It's people change a lot in, oh my God, how many years is it? 99, 2009. Holy God, this is like 30 or something some years ago. If, am I incorrect here? No, it's like 30 some years ago. So yeah, if it was more recent, sure. On a but Thursday, page 320. And it's called Cheering the Hearse. Okay. Okay. So basically, Ryan's mother wrote the editor of the paper and said that she thinks it's appalling for us to celebrate death, even if it happens by the state for this kind of reason, because she's against the death penalty. Okay? okay. This is from Brian Kohlberger's own mother. I don't care if it's from her mother. Again, it's 30 some years ago. I don't care. Who is now but silent about. She should be silent. It, she didn't do anything wrong. That we know of. Her son. Crazy. She wrote, it says Brooklyn. What are you going to say if your child, and God forbid, I'm not going to say anything crazy, but if he just does something wrong and the people around you start to bash you for, oh, it's your fault as the parent that the child decided to do something wrong at an eight, as a 16-year-old. Okay, fine. Now, let's imagine he's 25 and he does something wrong. You're literally going to stand there and go, hey, he's 25. He chose this himself. How's it my fault? That you, would, you are a hypocrite. Perhaps one of the saddest commentaries on the mankind, on mankind was evident. She's reading it. One of the saddest commentaries on mankind was during evident. During the execution of Theodore Bundy. During the, you know, of Bundy. While no sane... Bundy is the one, for those of you that may not remember, who very prolific, you know, serial bad guy. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, you know, big news. You could probably Google him really quick if you need to because I can't go into too much detail. YouTube might tear me up for it. Compassionate you know individual would excuse the atrocities committed by this man. Okay, so first point that the mother makes is that she finds it atrocious for someone to harm other people. Well, you're, all you're doing is making me agree with her right here, Molly, but let's hear the rest. Neither would any sane individual applaud the passing of this funeral hearse. Okay, so now this is 1989. Uh, the world was much different. Writing your editor was kind of a big thing. You know, you didn't do it all the time. It wasn't like it is now where you can just send a tweet to an editor of a paper. And she says, we should not be applauding people being, you know, put down. We shouldn't applaud people dying. We shouldn't applaud it when a murderer does it. And we shouldn't applaud it when the state does it. And you know what? I agree with her. Oh my God, shocking revelation, Molly. I don't think we should applaud it. Both ways. Now, this is coming from myself, who is okay with these people as long as you can prove they're the ones that did it. As long as there's no shadow of doubt, I'm fine with the goodbye bye penalty. That's my opinion. Like I'm I'm fine with it when it comes to these extreme crimes. Okay. So my point is it doesn't mean that I think we should applaud or celebrate the death maybe we celebrate that he's caught maybe we celebrate that it's over i don't yeah i i, I do ag agree that it's very bad form it's very kind of demented right and that's the point i believe she's making what have we become in the taking of a human life oh and yes i do i have to talk a lot guys i'm sorry that i have to talk a lot but i have to make sure that i've given you commentary so that they can't try to strike me. They're very, they file false strikes, they dox, they threaten people. So I have to make sure that I'm 100%. So, you know, I won't get mad if anyone who thinks I talk too much clicks off the video, but that just has to be this way with these people. Life acceptable when the state takes responsibility for it. Quote, Mary Ann Koberger. Okay, so how do we know this is the same one? I mean, I'm sure Molly, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> I would hope that Molly had, had actually fact-checked this is the same Mary Ann Koberger. But uh, let's just give it to her. I'm not going to go out and look. Let's just pretend, 
even though I do believe we should fact check it because I think there's a lot of Marianne Koberger's, um, let's uh, since 1989, you know, let's go ahead and just give it to her. This is the same person, Marianne Koberger. So, what's your take, Molly? How do you feel about the fact that she's so against people being, you know, that she even thinks we shouldn't celebrate what happened to the punishment, the ultimate punishment? We shouldn't celebrate. She is so against it. She is so against murmur. She's so against harming people that she's even against us celebrating the punishment. Even though the punishment had to happen, she's against us celebrating it. Okay, what's your take? How do you feel? Boy, do you have some nerve. Okay, how? You need to explain. Like we, unless this is just an act, unless you're just faking this for content, to exploit the situation for more content, I would assume you would want people watching you to understand why you're outraged. Please explain. Boy. Boy. I'm going to read this again. Because now, in 2023, or actually 2022, look what you raised. Okay, so her commentary is look what you raised. So her being against all of this somehow is doesn't matter. Her own thoughts, her own opinions, if her adult son does this horrible thing, we now should put his actions on the mother, which I find is a very dangerous thing to do. I also think that people who didn't do it shouldn't be blamed for it. They shouldn't be hated for it, right? I think one of the worst things that we can do as people is to allow ourselves to look at an innocent person just sitting there looking at what's gone on and just most, if she it does hold the same opinion that she held in 89, I'll go ahead and say she does for this reaction. You know, she obviously... Uh, is against what he did we can we can see that she is so against it she would write in to the editor she would write out a letter address it to the editor mail it in knowing that it could be published right so i don't we got an innocent person who is very active in how she feels against this stuff but molly thinks that we should blame this person without a reason without any type of you know explanation and I know you're gonna read this cause I'm gonna tag the shit out of you. And I hope you get to at least. So you're admitting that you are going to um, uh, insert yourself into this situation. You're admitting that when you do insert yourself into this situation, you're going to harass because you're just gonna, if you were just gonna tag her and let, your know, let her know how you felt, I wouldn't say that. But the fact that you're going to tag the doo-doo out of her and constantly attack, uh, you tag her and constantly go at her. That's where I believe you are harassing. And you're going to take your anger and vitriol out. So you're not going logically. You're not going in any type of thought out way. You're not making a point. You're, you're mad. You're angry. And you're taking. We already know that you're jealous of Brian. My last stream showed that you were sitting there upset <laughs> and whining about how he was getting media attention. Right? It seems like you and her would get along with the way you feel about these people. If she believes we shouldn't applaud the hearse, she probably believes we shouldn't give media attention to the people that do it either. Right? It's crazy when you start to listen to Molly. Hear what I have to say. Because anytime I make a video and I tag the shit out of a person, I will get this video to you. Even if they choose not to watch it, ignore you block you what if they don't look at their social media like maybe they've got things going on in the real world that are too important they're not even both they don't even like the the phone isn't even in their realm of thought whatsoever how are you going to get it to her there and i want you to know who justice for all is oh ju justice for all the one the, the guy who ab who is horrible at true crime who likes to LARP and pretend that he has some kind of expertise in it. And someone who's just as unprofessional as you. Someone who's just as 
vitriolic as you, someone who doxes just as much as you and is okay with it, someone who supports you doing the most vile things you do, that justice for all? Justice for all is my friend. We know. Justin is a web sleuth. And my- Oh, Jessica, I have to take Motrin before I listen to her. I have to take Motrin. My friends are Bullhorn <laughs> Betty and Chronicles of Olivia. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't know anything about Chronicles of Olivia, so take her out of the situation. But you being friends with Bullhorn Betty, I think, exposes you as a hypocrite. Because you're willing to hold what this woman said in 1989 over her head now. But you won't hold Bullhorn Betty choking a man after knocking his teeth loose, punching him in the face, and doing so many more violent things, running to the people's backyards in the middle of the night, and after she's been banned from the property, she's got all the, like, 42 different really insanely nasty bad things that she's done, and out of them, some of the worst things, you know, and what, by the way, why is it that you're not outraged at Betty in the same way that you're outraged at Brian, because she could have just as easily killed that man. And it would be, like, she would be a person who had done it too. But for some reason, you're willing to just let Betty off the hook when Betty's stuff is way more recent than 1989. It's way, way, way more recent than 1989. Seems very hypocritical, Molly. The more I listen to you, the more I think you might just be putting on an act to make some content. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm starting to really get there. I want you to know that Kaylee followed Chronicles of Olivia. I don't know who Kaylee is. I'll assume it's a family member, I guess, of uh, Brian. But uh, so what? People following other people on social media? Do you know that I have a friend who's followed by, I think it was uh, uh, Elon Musk, and then Katie's brother... Katie Joy's brother is followed by Obama. Okay? Oh, frickin' Obama. <laughs> like a president. You know what I'm saying? Someone who's going to be in the history books well long after we're all dead and will still be there. Right? And, and a person's brother is being followed by... So it doesn't... Who gives a shit who's following who? You act like... You know what it is? It's almost like she's mad and angry that this case is being solved and she can't monetize it further. So, Becca, hey, thank you. And then she's so mad over it. She's so angry over it. Now, she's she's even mad at the family members, man. Part of our team. Part of our team heals on the ground. Hey, I didn't say I support Obama. I didn't say that. I hate all politicians. I hate them all. I think you could go put them all into a bucket and... Throw them in the river. I hate politics and all politicians. She knew who Olivia was. And Olivia went out there. No, with no, no, no. Betty. No, 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 no. Somebody following them does not mean that that they know who this person is. That's not, that does not mean that. Following someone on Twitter does not mean that they know everything about somebody. You are doing this thing again where you just make shit up and, and to fit some weird narrative you're inventing. To look, to see. We know, at least we know she ain't happy today. She's not in a good mood. She ain't happy. She's even got the, 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 the hefty trash bag on. Like, she must be in a really bad mood because she went and grabbed that hefty and put it on. What kind of person? What kind of animal? What kind of vindictive, disgusting monster could do this? Walk into a home. Oh, you're talking about him. You're not. So you've switched from talking about the mother to him. Okay. And slaughter three young, beautiful women. I think a psychopath. Yeah, I think a psychopath would. I think a uh, monster would, yeah. Uh-huh. So, again, though, why are you yelling at his mother? You still haven't told us. You're yelling at his mother because she wrote the editor of a newspaper in 1989 being so against Murmur that she doesn't want us clapping for hearses when the state executes somebody? And a young gentleman in the middle of the night as they slept... 
Um, well, if you believe Bullhorn Betty, they weren't asleep if you if with her audio, but you know. And this lady was the son that you raised. See this there it is. There it is. So it's the literally the only reason that she's even mad at this woman is because she's the mother of this guy. She is the mother of this guy. But her logic doesn't apply in any other situation in that way, right? She doesn't look at anyone else and apply that logic. But when it comes to this situation, she's decided the family is open game here. They, they are an open target, the family. You had the adocity. Oh my God, it rem adocity? You had the adocity? What is an adocity, Molly? You know, this reminds me of Dre. Dre and Marvon, because we couldn't figure out why she was targeting Dre and, and attacking Dre so much. Hope says she was one of the victims because she followed Olivia, I believe. That's what makes them say they were invited, and now MGL is jumping on the bandwagon. No way. Get them, Moscow police. So hold on. I was wondering, in my video on Unirock 2 that I just uploaded, we have um, Bullhorn Betty saying that she was invited to to the, the families and stuff like that. And so you're like, I always, I wondered what that was, but it was because one of the victims was interested in true crime and followed one of these people online. And literally they've gone and taken that and turned it into all this other stuff. Okay, that, now I'm starting to figure this out. I'm starting to figure this out. Uh, good point. Who said that? Jessica, good point. Jessica says, what logic, Uni? She's incapable of logic. That's right. You know what? You're right, Jessica. I shouldn't have given her the credence of thinking that she even knows what logic is. To write this, right? And look what you wrote. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To write this. I don't understand what you mean to write this. I don't know if you misread it. Did you misread this like you misread the thing about him getting pots and pans in prison? Because guess what? She's come out to admit... She, she, instead of admitting that she was wrong about the pots and pans, remember my last stream, we were sitting here like, what are you talking about, Molly? They didn't give him special pots and pans. She was watching Banfield. And if you guys followed me reporting on Gabby Petito before she went missing, you know who Banfield is. It's a famous, like a big reporter person, right? It's, it's not like an actual, like, um, mainstream news reporter, but all those other, like, news agencies that are out there, Banfield's one of the bigger ones. Uh, a lot of people watch Banfield. And anyway, so Banfield in one of her reports had, had said how he was such a vegan that his aunt would have to buy a new pan before preparing him a meal because he wouldn't eat out of a pan that had cooked animal meat. And Molly heard that and turned it into the police pulled over and went to some luxury store to buy him pots and pans while he's in jail. No joke. You can watch my last stream if you want to hear that. And man, is it a good stream because it's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but instead of admitting she was wrong and apologizing for the lies she told about the specific store she said the police went to, the specific like very expensive store that she went to, right? She instead says that it's Banfield's fault that she lied to everybody and said that she would never go on Banfield's show, ever, because Banfield somehow lied or some, did something wrong because Molly lied to all of us, right? So just to update you. A serial killer in training. I want you to know that my... F what now? In training? To write this? Right? And Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Look what you raised. A serial killer in training. Hold on, hold on. So you're saying because he studied criminology, because of the field that he was in, that, that equates to him being one in training? For God's sakes, Molly? What now? So now we have to look at every person who studies forensic science, criminology, and all of these different, you know, fields of science, and we have to look at them a little bit sideways, like, hmm, I wonder if they're in training. Uh, isn't there a difference between education and the field of science and someone training to go out and do this, for God's sakes? You don't think there's anything different about that? I want you to know that my friends here, Justin. 
You can have him. You can have Justin because Justin's just horrible. He is just horrible. You know what he did? He literally tried to unblur Gabby Petito. They had blurred Gabby Petito, her, her body, when she was the car was being pulled out. He took the video, went live, and tried to unblur it and look at her dead body live. So you can have Justin. You can take his uh, his uh, necro ways and and you can have him has been sitting there for over a month going over detail yeah and he's been wrong so much it's insane how much betty and justin have been wrong over and over and over and over i was going back and looking at some of the stuff they've been saying and some of the coverage they've done they are really bad it's like it's like a comedy series you think while you're watching Justin and Betty and the rest of these lie crime uh, community YouTubers that they're actually putting on a parody. You think they're being sarcastic and they're doing it for comedy because it's so funny listening to the dumb things that come out of their mouth showing how little they know about the field, how little they know about reporting, and how illogical they are. They make giant leaps of logic. They show how, how much they've not studied the subject. It's really actually very entertaining in fact i think that's why a lot of people like coming here and laughing at all of this with us at night you know i mean i don't care if you, you know we got a couple hundred people or if we only got 50 people i'll still do the stream because i'm just here to have fun uh but i think the reason so many people like the content is because you guys are that cringy you are that bad and it's funny it's comedic it adds that kind of you know larpy kind of comedy detail detail Oh, she's really getting into it, man. Man, she's really getting into it. Justin's been studying details after detail after detail. Watching the news. Go ahead, tell her what you... He's done so much work. He's such a good reporter and commentator to this subject because he watched the news and he said details. You want to say to her? Go ahead, Justin. What do you want to say to Brian's mom because she wrote a newspaper in 1989? Well, I don't, I don't. Say something to her. Justin's like, look, Molly, don't make me do this. Molly, I don't want to do this. I, I really don't want to be cringy right now. I'm just trying to relax. Justin's probably over there playing some little video game or something while he's listening to Molly scream and yell, lynching every once in a while, you know? So he's like, no, I don't want to, Molly. Don't make me. Uh -huh. Thank you, well, Cindy. Say I something don't... to this woman. Because now's I'm... your chance. Because I'm going to give her this video. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it Kylie? Did I say that wrong? I, I apologize. It was Kylie. Thank you. I mean, she's she has... Uh, it's Kylie, not Gabby, that Justin tried to show in the car. Thank you, Lauren. I misspoke. I, I was just, I, I was thinking about Gabby when I said that. Raised so. the monster, and yeah, you did raise a monster. Oh, so we're supposed to hate this person because their adult son did this. That just because of that. There's like, it doesn't have to be like Brian Laundry, and they don't have to like. You know, decide not to tell the Petitos. They have to decide not to give information. We literally just, because this guy did this, we go around hating. So we hate the mother and the father. Do we hate the cousins? We do, right? I mean, by the same logic that we hate the mother and father, we should hate the brother and sister. So we got to hate the mother and father, the brother and sister. We should probably hate the cousins. We just want to be safe. We definitely have to hate grandparents, uncles, and aunts. Any direct relation, she's her and Justin believe we have to hate them now. Uh, what about friends? No, I don't think we should hate friends. Definitely best friends. Hell, sometimes your best friends are closer than your family. We can't take a chance in our hating of just random innocent people. Let's hate the best friends too. Right, Justin and Molly? They don't have to do anything wrong. We just got to hate them. She has, she, they've known about, I mean, the sister is. She whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Moscow, Moscow, Moscow alert. Hold on. I need my damn uh, low cow meter here. I need my low meter because this is just cringy AF. This is cringy AF. We need the low meter. Uh, you just said the sister knew, Justin. Yeah, you did. I just heard you say that the sister knew. Let's hear this one more time. The sister what? Monster. She has, she, they've known about, I mean, the sister is... She They've known, the sister has known, they've known, they've known that he was going to do this and they didn't do anything, Justin. Somebody needs to let Moscow know so Moscow can fact check you.
because you know if you put out misinformation in this case the police are going to be looking at you i think the police should fact check whether the sister knew because justin you know that there's a professor right now suing a social media influencer because that person put out a video and it went viral where they were accusing them of being a suspect and they are now suing them for defamation and uh, we're going to cover that case, but I'm just saying Moscow also has said that anybody who puts out misinformation, threatens people, harasses people at all can be subject to criminal charges in this case. They want you to know ahead of time. They don't want you to be able to say that you didn't know, so you can't use that as an excuse here. So, Justin, you're saying that the sister knew, and at the same time, you're saying that we should hate family members for being related to Brian. Okay, well, I do think that fits underneath the police's thing here, right? Unless you've got some proof. You've got proof that the sister knew he was going to do this. Oh, good. Let's hear it. Let's hear what the proof is because, man, you guys know more than the cops. The cops hasn't even, if the cops knew the sister knew, they'd arrest the sister already. But the last time I checked, which was right before this stream, they haven't arrested the sister yet. So can you guys tell me how you know the sister knows? No. A psychologist or a psychiatrist, I don't know, but. You don't even know if she's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. You don't even know. Do you know the difference between them? You don't know if she's one or the other. They knew and they did nothing. They knew. They knew. Now she's so Ma, now Justin said that the sister knew. Um, Justin corrected himself from saying that the mother and father knew to saying that the sister knew. You know, we got to go ahead and give this at least a 50 percent on the low meter. It's going to at least 50% on the low cow meter here. Uh, Lauren says she knew because she was a mental health professional. That's ridiculous. Yes, very much it's ridiculous. But remember, though, that's what Justin said, that the sister knew. Molly just said they knew. Now, what? who were they talking about as they before Justin went into the sister? They were talking about the parents. So Molly is screaming that the parents and the sister knew. Justin has only stated to this point that the sister knew. What do, oh, oh yeah, what does that say there? I just need to read it really quick. Okay, okay, just checking, just checking. Okay, let's keep going. Nothing but stop them. They did uh, nothing. They did nothing to stop them. So, okay. We should hate the mother if she posts uh, uh, in 1989 her opinion on cheering death sentences. We should hate family members who are related to Brian. We should hate the sister because she was a psychologist or a psychiatrist and she knew that Brian was going to do this. And now Molly is saying the mother and father and sister knew and they did nothing to stop him. So, gee, I wonder what Molly's audience is thinking while they're hearing all of this. Like, I wonder if Molly's audience might be getting mad at the mother, father, and sister. And again... We have no evidence or information the mother or father or sister did anything wrong. This man was living away from them, and he was an adult. He'd been an adult for a long time. So, you know, again, if he was 18, you could say he's only been an adult for a year. So the mother's, you know, treatment of him and teachings could have led to this. That would be Molly's argument. But how do we know that something hasn't happened from the time he moved away at 18 to the time he did this, which is many, many years? How do we know that that isn't why he did what he did? Are you saying that every person who does this as an adult, 30, 40, 50 years old, does this to somebody, we have to go to their childhood and blame their parents? I'm just making sure. Listen, I'm going to take your advice, Molly and Justin. I'm going to hate them because you told me to, and I'm going to do what you tell me to do. So I just got to make sure I'm hearing this correctly. They knew. And look at the look at the eyes on him. The Department of Justice uh, uh, of Criminology in Washington University uh, uh, she was uh, saying that, uh, where was it at? Uh, where, let me find it, hold on. So entertaining and relevant commentary, Justin. Great commentary. What is your PayPal, Justin? I want to give you money just from hearing you say that. that. He, uh, 
By the way, my PayPal is paypal.me forward slash unirock if you like my content. Burger has cannibalistic urges and has can let me find it. Hold on. That he uh Kohlberger has cannibalistic urges. Somehow somebody in Washington said that he has cannibalistic urges. Okay, I'll just take your word for it. I'll just take your word for it. I guess. But how is it that this person in Washington knows this about Brian? Is this his psychiatrist? Hey, wait a minute, Molly and Justin. Why isn't Brian's psychiatrist or psychologist or his his uh, general practice doctor or his surgeon to blame? Wait a minute. Why aren't his teachers to blame? Hold on. This doesn't make sense. If I'm going to blame the mother and the sister and the father, I have to blame the teacher, the first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth, at least the fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. Maybe not the high school teachers because he could have been one of those rambunctious kids. You know, I'm going to go ahead and just blame all of his teachers too. You know? Not like they're innocent. And I'm trying to find it. Not like they're innocent. Hell, they're guilty. You know, they're almost as guilty as Brian, according to these two. They're almost as guilty. They're, 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 remember, she's angrier now at the mother than she was a couple days ago at Brian himself. Remember the video? She wasn't yelling at Brian. She wasn't screaming and yelling at him. She's angry at the mother. She's shown more anger at the mother than she has towards Brian. Oh, she's oh, okay. So she splits her name. Okay, so now Molly is gonna go in and search for any details she can on this person while live. What's the sister's name? Anybody know? Yeah, the, the, this is great content. It's such productive, great content for YouTubers who say that we should hate family members to in front of their audience and whip them into this big anger, angry thing where they equate the same kind of anger they have at Brian towards his family and then go and give their legal names out, their locations. Are we going to give where they currently are right now? Do you have any GPS data? Or is that what you're going to look for next? GPS data, Molly? You know the sister's name? He studied with... Uh... Obsessive really have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remy says now she's blaming the mother. Oh, yes, definitely blaming the mother and father and sister. They actually said that the sister knew he was going to do this. And I just played it. I just played many boring minutes before they said it so they can't say I'm cherry picking. And I'm going to play many boring minutes after they said it so they can't say I'm cherry picking so that everyone knows they definitely said that the sister knew. And she knew he was going to do this and she did nothing. Molly literally yelled and she did nothing about it. Uh, Remy says, the father of one of the victims has said what he thinks he isn't blaming them entirely he said they are feeling a different pain than theirs exactly exactly and that's the father that father is going to be mad at you know he's going to go through the stages of grief extremely bad you know he's going to be mad at people who don't even deserve for him to be mad at them and that's perfectly fine as you know as long as he doesn't attack him or anything um but the thing is Molly and Justin are acting like they, they somehow, you know, are carrying out justice against the mother of Brian because she gave birth to the guy. And again, I can get mad at her. I could, but I need to know why. I need to know what she did as an innocent person who didn't do this to anyone. I need to know what she did before I'm going to get mad at her. I don't blame her for her son doing this. I'm sorry. I don't. I think that's dangerous territory. Family. Indicated he uh, that he was afraid that he would become addicted uh, to the meat. He was Just not only big, and he refused to eat. So, so this psychiatrist or someone in Washington, psychologist in Washington, you guys are never really clear when it comes to those two words. You said that he's also cannibalistic. Off okay. the pots and plates that uh, he had meat on psychologically this represents his struggle against his now you're you're not just reading someone's take on public information are you 
you're you're reading someone who personally interacted with Brian and talked to him, right? I want to. Why can't we know that before you talk? So this person sat down and interviewed Brian, got to know his mind, got to know what he was like, what he felt, how he felt, and all this. This isn't just some random person coming out and giving an, a a thought, are they? Just cannibalistic urges. Um, Welsh says by so by Molly's reasoning, her family. It's their fault that she scammed so many people. Well, yeah, by her reasoning, it is. He was afraid that if he let himself go to taste me once, he would become addicted to it like he would become... Uh, a well, I don't understand how this makes sense. The man has obviously tasted meat in his life. That's just insane. That You're saying that he hasn't. His family cooked meat. That's why they had to replace the dishes if they if his family were hardcore vegans too they wouldn't have had to replace the dishes so he's obviously been around it i don't know lauren i'm trying to figure that out thank you jennifer um i'm trying to figure out he because all brought all that justin said is that he's reading from some person in washington saying this and i said so this person in washington obviously isn't just someone reading public information and then talking this has to be the the amount of information and opinion they're giving. They obviously must have been personally interacting with Brian to hold the opinion that they're holding. Now, the other part of this is I haven't seen any of this on the news yet. You'd think that if one of Brian's doctors came out and said that he was a cannibal and that he didn't eat meat because he didn't want to get addicted to the meat and then eat humans or something, you'd think that would have been on the news. Now, it could be on the news by now. I just checked before the stream, okay? We'll go look at the news in a minute. We, I want to finish this clip. But, you know, these guys, this is what I mean by they're so horrible at this whole thing. Justin isn't saying that this is just a random person's opinion on social media. Justin isn't telling you that it's a doctor who treated Brian and actually knows him. And we are left to wonder. And because he didn't tell us this, I can't take it as a real piece of information until I know. Because if it's just a random person on social media who read the news reports, they're not going to know whether he has cannibalistic urges based on him being a vegan, right? But I do think there are people crazy enough to just go out and say that on social media. I'm looking at two of them right here. So until I can fact check it, I just don't know. Can I please, though, tell you, look at Molly's face. Look at her face. What in the hell is going on there? Did it lock up? Did she get so angry that her face literally locked up? This is angry Molly mode. Addicted to the heroin. And Bad Wolf says this has not been on the news. The vegan story is so stupid. They are so stupid. See, and I looked and I didn't find it, but you know, I want to make sure I give it enough time. You know, Again, Justin says that a specific psychologist in Washington says that Brian is a cannibal and yada, 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 yada. And I'm like, well, why was he being treated in Washington? Because obviously, unless this person's treated Brian, they wouldn't know. They wouldn't have the information. Start uh, killing and eating people. Um, what? This is something that is family members that have uh, married into the family some are still in the family some aren't they've, they've talked out we got and, the mother and they yes, said yes. go ahead so now she's doxing the mother for whatever weird reason let me dox his mother here her face i've already told you to hate her i've told you that you should She's told her audience that she's going to spam her on social media. Now she's shown the mother's face. I mean, is that what Molly just spent five minutes doing is looking at the, trying to dox the mother? Uh, Menace says, General, it's fire. Okay. Uh-oh. Wait, I think I have this video. Oh, that's the one I got. Oh, I'm in the wrong damn room. Sorry, Menace. Hold up. A forensic psychiatrist from Newsweek. Oh, so this is where they got it, Menace? Okay, let's take a look. Excellent. Thank you, buddy. This is why I wanted to wait until we had some type of source. The man in connection with the slangs of four University of Idaho students battled with urges. A forensic psychiatrist 
told Newsweek, a forensic psychiatrist was arrested. Da, 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 da. Forensic psychiatrist Carol Lieberman told Newsweek that Koberger's reported obsessive compulsive eating habits indicate. So hold on, this is this is just a random person. This is not someone that actually treated him. So when I go and I link to Carol Lieberman, it takes me to this. Brian was trying to commit the perfect crime. Is Newsweek fake news or something? This just seems so stupid. Seems such clickbait. So at DeSales University, Komerger was taught by Kathman Ramsland, a renowned psychologist. And I'm making, okay, I'm making no statements at this time. Okay, then why are you telling me? This is really bad. Hey, Bunny! Thank you. He was not only vegan, he refused to eat off pots or plates that had meat on them. Psychologically, this represents his struggle against cannibalistic urges. What? What? So it, this is a random psychologist. This is not Brian's psychologist saying this. I'm going to wait until we have more information before I believe whether he was had cannibalistic urges or not, for God's sakes. Because that could be some vicious-ass clickbait. That literally seems like the most bunkus article ever. Hey, hey, this is Newsweek. We found a psychologist in Washington who says he wants to eat people. Yes, because he didn't want to use pots and pans that cooked animals, he must be a, can uh, a, a cannibalistic. I, I don't, that just sounds really stupid. They said that they made... Is this how dumb Justin is? Does he not source or think about anything he says or, or, or anything? Um... Does he, just, does he just read something off of the internet and then go, oh my God, that's true. Has to be true. I mean, all I ask is that he actually thinks about it. <laughs> Life of hell, pretty much, because it was his obsession. Like, it it, it wasn't, he, he wasn't vegan simply for not harming animals. It, it had nothing to do with harming animals. No, 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 that's not what the article said. That's not what this person said. This person said that they believed because he didn't want to eat on pots and pans where animals had been cooked, that it could be that he had human eating urges. That's what it said. I just read it. So I don't know where you're getting all this additional information, Justin, but where? Where are you getting it? Really? You know, if you kill humans... Uh, but, you know, you won't kill animals. You know, something is, the moral compass is wrong. It was simply... Yeah, you know what else I think about uh, the moral compass that's wrong? The way you guys are yelling and screaming at the mother and how you guys apply your thought process to the mother, I think that your moral compass is wrong. You know, the way that you guys are okay with being around and supporting violent Betty... But you are willing to hate the mother because she had an opinion in 1989 that was very against murmur, very against celebrating it, very against the death penalty, very against all these things. I think your moral compass are the ones that are also just as jacked. For his urges, uh, he has obsessive, compulsive. Uh, Only if you're awake when he's reading. He has a thing about putting a person to sleep when he reads sometimes. I could believe it. Uh, Jeff says, did you just ask for Justin to think? Lol. Unless his minions make him a PowerPoint to read, then he has nothing to say. This guy can't finish a complete thought. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you know, I try to give him a little bit of credit when I react to anybody. And I need to stop doing that with these two because, Lord. Disorder in many... These two are getting really bad. It's like ever since they've been exposed as faking faking everything that they know, faking all, all of their new breaking news, faking all of their uh, you know, true crime knowledge. It, ever since then, it's like they're 
even worse. Every time they talk about something, it compounds and compounds and compounds. Different aspects from uh, obsessive cleaning. Oh, Jeff, I can't stand. I feel the same way listening to Molly or Betty. Like if I if it wasn't for the, of how cringy and funny it is, I wouldn't even be able to watch it. To no, no shit, it's bad. It gets really boring sometimes. Washing, um, obsessive diets and um see this is another really bad train of thought in my opinion because i don't think that a, a, a vegan or it's almost like they're reversing the whole vegan thing you know it's like they're bringing up him being a vegan and then they're saying uh it somehow has something to do with him being a serial you know and in reality, you would probably think the opposite, but for God's sake, what in the fuck, dude? It's like they're just rambling. I don't know what the hell's going on here. They're driving me crazy. They're making my brain cells commit suicide in my head right now. I'm losing brain cells as I listen to this. You know, it's... And it's almost like Molly broke. It's like Molly broke herself because she's not even doing or saying anything. She's just like, duh. It's these, uh, oh, if I, if I taste this meat, uh, then it's going to lead me closer to hurting someone. Uh what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? Are you kidding? So the guy is a vegan. Because if he eats meat, he's going to go into a cannibalistic rage and start eating everybody? What the fuck are you talking about, Justin? Maybe he's just a vegan because it's popular and he wants to fit in with people that are vegans right now. I mean, maybe there's a million other reasons he could be a vegan or not be a vegan. Could it be related? I, maybe, but it just seems so ridiculous. Lauren says he's not the only vegan who won't eat out of cookware that's been used to prepare meat. Are they all having cannibalistic urges for realsies? And that's, thank you, Lauren, because that's that's the point that I was trying to make. You said it way better than I did. So thank you. Uh, and, and, and the si okay, so you're telling me that the sister is a psychologist. Holy shit. Yes, for the fifth time, Molly. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, babe, will you get my... um? Can you find it? I'm getting cold. Um, yes, Molly, this is like the ninth time you've asked this question in 10 minutes. Yes! Correct? I don't know if she's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Oh my God, Justin, this is the fourth time you have said that in response to Molly. You guys are driving me up the wall. But she's one of the children. Okay, and she never thought... Oh. Do you think that a psychologist is a mind reader, Molly? Is that what you think a psychologist can do is predict people's behaviors to a T? Because, again, why is it that we don't have true uh, future crime and all that shit? Why can't we Why can't we stop these fools if we could read their minds like you're... Look at her face! Look at her face! If we can just be a psychologist and all of a sudden we can predict everyone's behavior, why can't we stop them? Literally, you're acting like we live in Tom Cruise's fucking future true crime world. What the fuck was the name of that movie, dude? Because that's a pretty good movie. Minority. Minority Report. It was it was uh it was based on a book by Philip K. Dick, really good writer, and um it's about being able to predict future crime and then arresting people before they murder somebody. <sighs> These two are acting like they live in Minority Report land. And one murder slipped through the cracks and they're outraged about it. <laughs> That's the only way to describe the way they're acting. Because in normal world, psychologists can't stop murmurs. In normal world, the mother and the father and the psychologist don't know how to predict that their kids are going to do this and then stop them. And they shouldn't be held responsible in, in the real world. Okay, my brother might be a little off. Molly, you are a little off. 
you are a little off. Should we think you're going to do something like this? Because literally, if we're going to think anyone who is off needs to be like locked up, you're the first one. Actually, you're the second. Bullhorn Betty's the first because Betty's already almost killed somebody. Bullhorn Betty has already almost killed somebody. And you hang out with her. How do you know Betty's not going to go off on someone again and try to choke them to death again? How do you know she's not going to? Why can't we use this same logic on you? Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and what's the sister's name? Jennifer. Oh, now she's going to dox the sister. She just doxed the mother. Now she's going to dox the sister. Jennifer, is that what? Okay, she's more than a little off. You're right. What they You're said? Right. Jennifer Koberger? Jennifer Koberger? What, 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 the, what, uh, what is going on with your face right now? What is happening with your lips? Is her sister named Jennifer Koberger? What if I talk like, what if I talk like Molly? Can I have 100,000 subs if I talk like Molly? Jennifer Koberger? Jennifer Koberger? Jennifer Koberger? I don't even, I can't even do it, Molly. How do you do that? How do you do it? It's a, it's pretty impressive. Oh, Melissa Koberger. Holy shit, you had her name wrong. Now you got like 22 of your rabid fans doxing somebody named Jennifer Koberger, and it's not even her name. <laughs> I can't even do it, bro. I wish I could. How did she do that? Is it the injections? Do the injections give her lips some type of malleability that I don't have? It is keeping me. I'm almost there, y'all. I'm almost. I'm almost. I'm almost there. I don't know if the gag order goes under his. His. Almost. If I keep practicing, I'll be pretty good at it. Parents or not. Uh, I don't uh, give a flying. Uh, you know what? Oh my god, these people, bro. <laughs> you know, we want to know something. I. Molly, please do the lip thing again. Please do the lip thing again. Please, please, please. It's very, very entertaining. Please. In fact, I'm giving it a little more. And I'm giving it two points on the lull meter here. Hold up. Go ahead. Okay. When you gave me that affidavit. To lip to read. I don't know how she does it, dude. It, her lips, it's like it, you know what? Have you ever seen a cartoon where the where someone does that with like it's Ren and Stimpy, I think, and their lips go out and like wrap around somebody or something? Like, geez, Louise, dude, it's like she's got the really long, flappy lips going on. And he had a USM. I can't do it. knife holder, and he left it by the on the side. Yeah, he left his knife holder. He dropped it. He left it in the heat of the moment. Whatever. Yeah, he did. Nah, he's we not know too this. smart. What does that make you? <laughs> Some dude left a knife holder in a vicious assault laying somewhere, and he forgot to grab it. It must have fell out of his pocket, right? And it makes him dumb. Okay, Molly. You gotta be really dumb then, okay? <laughs> no, he's not too smart. You're not either. No. That's not too smart. You're not too smart. I, I promise I'm going to stop now, okay? I tried. I can't do it. That's not smart at all. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. I have to go back. Hold on. It, it, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm going to make it my donation sound effect or something. Pretty much. Where is because it? Because it, it, you know, come for his from... I have this to see it again. I can't. The psychologist. Okay, and she never thought this disorder as was human. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. What's the sister's name? Here it is. Here it is. I have to see this again. It's too good. Obsessive. You want me to put it in slow motion? <laughs> I'm gonna zoom in on it in slow motion. Oh wait. Yeah, 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 I'm really indicated he uh that he was afraid that he would become he refused to eat off the pots and play presents uh he had against Where is his that? cannibalistic uh, addiction um, yes. 
Go ahead. They may okay, there's the mother. Okay, she's exercising the lips. She's stretching her lips out for this performance we're about to see. She's already, you know, having her lips flex and stretch, and she's getting ready for it. Here it oh, comes. You won't Look, kill animals. tell me she's not. She's stretching them out. And she's getting them ready. Is, was from Washington. It's going on. The psychologist. Come on, come on, come on. Jennifer? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Gotcha. And and what's the sister's name? Jennifer? Jennifer, is that what they said? Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Jennifer Koberger? Jennifer Koberger? Oh, Melissa Koberger. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, uh, no, that ain't it. Uh, playback, uh, 0.25, here we go. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I don't know how her lips work like this. Oh, oh my god, it's so fascinating. I want to say, I just that's not smart wow. at all. Wow. No, that's not too smart. What else happening? That's not smart at all. Yeah, man. Hey, would you guys like it if every time you donated to me, it, it had a little pop up of Molly going, <laughs> I, I would like that. I'm going to do that. No. Marianne Kohlberger. I'm telling you. The. Yes. What are you telling what me? What this guy has done. And, and, and I really did have a feeling. I didn't want to get ahead of myself. Oh, here we go. This is pretty good. Okay, we'll we'll go to a different video after this. You got to hear this part. <laughs> you all right? I'm sorry. I'll I'll drop the link again. I'll drop the link again. I had a feeling I didn't want to say. I, I feel like she's gonna eat. I me. just had a feeling it was someone from the outside, and, and I I really think she could inhale a whole human being. I knew it would be someone that was kind of incel. Uh, she's like one of those snakes, man. She just unhinges her jaw. <sighs> ish and i kind of uh got a a little worried i got a little worried that it was <gasps> taken a okay something's wrong with molly she's like i'm i'm seeing the gambit of her face express you know anger to complete fear in under a second and then go back and forth man well, oh this is intense and i can't handle long, it but before i left Bullhorn Betty. Before I left Bullhorn Betty and Olivia. Oh God, what is happening with your stomach right now? Are you about to give birth to something? Yeah. I did tell them. I think you guys are going to have some good luck. I think you guys are going to get some news. Okay. So, okay, hold on. So you almost predicted that Betty was about to get the the super secret audio that only Betty could get. Like, the news doesn't want the audio. There's no other YouTuber out there that wants... Like, you, Betty has this audio, and you knew it was coming. Okay. I I, I really did. I, I, I did say that. I said, I feel like something's coming. And then when I had that conversation with Vinny... Oh, my God. I can't do it. We're going to two times speed. I really do feel like it'll be like normal speed. Here we go. Alex, on the phone, he's like, he's studying criminology. So, well, She's the only YouTuber you can put on two times speed, and it's almost like it's normal. Obviously, he's not too smart, Vinny. I go, if I was to start, if I was to study criminology, and did you say that he had a PhD in criminology? No. Are you sure about that PhD? Oh, well, I mean, he taught. He had an <sighs> office at the Washington. Uh, he, had he didn't have. What did, what, what did he have, guys? Was it a master's or something or a bachelor's? I don't know. Somebody tell me in the chat. A PhD. So, yeah. A flap attack. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Like, if she goes like this, she could slap somebody silly. <laughs> I 
I don't know where I come up with this stuff, yeah, bro. Yeah, this is he. What did he say? <laughs> like all she does is go, "Oh yeah, you wanna you wanna fight? Okay." And all of a sudden, that person's just knocked silly. The, the fight's over. Oh my god. She'd be the best MMA fighter ever. He said, "Yeah." I call, now I can't remember. I don't know if I said it. Or he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Typical intel." And then he wrote back one hundred percent. So he had a master's. Okay, so if he only had a master's, that's not a PhD. So he was going for the PhD. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Justin. I'm going to say he was a serial killer in training. He oh, probably God. looked up to <clears throat> serial killers, which a lot of people do that. Uh, a lot of people? A lot of people. Molly, a lot of people look up to the serial killers. A lot of them do. So, like, it's not that a small amount of people do a lot. So we're talking, what, 50 to 80% of people look up to them? Because that would be a lot. Small amount might be like ten to thirty percent. You just said that a lot of people look up to them. Oh yes, there's something wrong with him. Well, his, and... former, his former teacher. No shit, dude. We don't need you and Justin's genius commentary that a man who just did this to four people has something wrong with them. It's obvious. You're literally desperate for content. Um, at a university that he. This is why we criticize you. You are exploiting and using the Moscow story views and clicks and you have nothing to say and instead of you i don't know doing some normal content you just say a bunch of crazy dumb shit because you don't know what to, you don't have anything to say i graduated from recently uh this is obligatory going live this is what this is it's not that they went live because they had something this is them going live and stretching it out as far as they can because they want some money she uh talks uh to the b b Molly, seriously, you are really overdoing it, man. You're really giving us way too much content and good stuff. Stop. TK Killer, which mm -hmm. he kind of had indirect access in a way. Yep. Oh, look at this. Tom says his student loan was forgiven, too. You know what we need to do, Tom? Tom Space? We need to find out anyone that could do a future murmur and make sure that their student loans are never forgiven. We need to also make sure we lock up people's mothers because they're not stopping their kids from doing this. Thank you, Justin and Molly, for the brilliant commentary. I heard about that. Yes, did you see what Tom Space said? His student loan was forgiven too. Thank you so much, President Biden and the Biden administration. This is what we get. So yes, our taxes paid for his education. No shit, he's a person. He's still a human being. He's not a supervillain. He's what? It, I thought you understood true crime. I thought you were a true crime person. <laughs> do you think that, that like, okay, so someone's going to do this in 10 years. We can't give them student loan. We can't give them a license. They can't live in a house. They have to live by a bridge down by the river. I don't, what are you, what are you saying? Forgiveness, lo loan forgiveness. Wonderful. I have to pay for my education. Mm. He got 10 grand. It wasn't forgiven. This biatch is dumb. I know, and if you guys want to ease my pain from, you know, I have to pour through this content all day to bring you these nuggets. Then you can support me by liking and subscribing. <laughs> subscribing to UniRock2, where we just uploaded a new video of us breaking down Bullhorn Betty's reporting of the Moscow situation. Or you can hook us up at paypal.me forward slash UniRock or patreon.com forward slash UniRock. Let's finish this video and go to the next one because we got another video for you. With interest. Holy crap. No, he's in protective custody. And then people will enter the comments saying, Marissa, where did you hear that he was getting special treatment with the POTS? I saw it on Instagram. Like, I, I saw it. Oh, 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 there it is. There it is. Here it is. Okay, sorry, sorry, Molly. We got to go back to normal speed. And it's going to take you 20 minutes to say something that takes 14 seconds. Um, So remember the last stream we did? I and Mo <laughs> Navy and myself were shocked when Molly said that the police literally pulled over and bought him a set of really expensive pots and pans from uh, what was the name of the store do you remember rachel they named the store and everything molly knew what store it was she said it was some expensive designer uh bullcrap betty yes thank you thank you i call her boo boo betty you know what i'm saying uh, William Sonoma, thank you, Lauren. Yes. So it was this really like nice store, not not Target, not Walmart. The cops didn't go and just get a basic new pot and pan, according to Molly. Oh no, the cops literally decided on their way uh, while transporting the fugitive or the the bad guy, the inmate, the prisoner. 
They were going to pull over at William Sonoma Luxury Furnishings and buy him a very nice pot and pan set and give him special treatment. That was our last live stream. Navy and myself did not believe it. Just like we're having a hard time believing this entire thing about, you know, um, Brian's psychiatrist thinking that he was uh, a vegan because he 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 had a propensity to want to eat human meat or whatever the hell they're saying, right? Anyway, anyway, Molly is going to explain to us why she lied, why she exploited this story for money, clicks, and subs, why she clickbaited us, why she lied about Brian. She's going to finally explain the lie she told in her last stream. Take a listen. And this is after this, we're going to another video because I'm literally about to freaking end my stream just because of how annoying this video so is. So where did you hear that he was getting special treatment with the pots? I saw it on Ashley Banfield. I, I, I saw it. It came up on my thing. You know what? I don't trust Ashley Banfield. Ashley Banfield. And it was Banfield. It wasn't Molly lied to us. It was Banfield, a reporter, a news reporter, told Molly in her broadcast. Now, again, no one else has seen this broadcast because it doesn't exist. That they gave Brian special treatment and his own pot and pan set from William Sonoma. Of course, Molly is just lying again. That is not what Banfield said. Banfield did not report that. You lied. Banfield reported how the ant would have to buy him a new pot and pan to cook his food in when he would visit the ant. Molly took that, lied to everybody, clickbaited everybody, exploited the story, and said that the police pulled over at William Sonoma. And me and Navy are sitting here like, so the chief of police authorized these cops that are transporting him to stop at William Sonoma and go on a freaking shopping spree. Wow! Okay, much better. Sorry, y'all. Huh. Uh, yes, I got a shirt, too. 
That way I don't have to go run and grab it again. Yeah, I've got vape on my... I've got vape on me. I don't care. I don't care. In my opinion, is a total whack job. I don't like dealing with her. I don't go on her show. I oh, Banfield is a whack job. She's saying that Banfield is a whack... How is Banfield compared to you... If we put you and Banfield next to each other, I'm sorry, Banfield would not be the whack job in that comparison. I will never go on her show. So she can't tell the truth, people. She can't tell you that she lied to us. She can't tell you she made it up. She has to put it on Banfield. <laughs> now, personally, I don't think, that, I don't really have anything against Banfield. I really don't know much about her. I know that during the Petito situation banfield did a lot of reporting i think brian inton and uh, either knew banfield or works with banfield or maybe he just went on banfield you guys know remember that, remember that? <laughs> this goes back to the chris watts days she's a jerk and that's why she you're just pissed because she's more successful than you times a million loses every job that she's ever freaking had okay hold on <laughs> Wait a minute, Banfield's a jerk because she lost a bunch of jobs. But you do know that when you're a news reporter, it's completely normal for you to kind of work your way up. I've never seen Banfield go down. Let me look up Banfield fired. I've never heard this. Yeah, nothing. No, nope, nothing there. Oh, oh, NBC. She was fired from NBC. Okay, Ashley Banfield on her last days at NBC. I was banished. Oh, you know what? Um, NBC is a horrible news, uh, uh, news station, but no, you know, Banfield could suck, but I know this Banfield didn't steal no money from those strippers, Molly. You see how crazy this is, man. You got some stripper thieves and then you got bullhorn Betty that likes to beat the living snot out of people and they love judging everybody else. It's just, it, they love making stuff up, lying, and then they never can admit when they're, when they're wrong. Hey, before you leave, turn that light off over there. That's what's messing up my lighting. I got all my other lights on, just not that one. She was replaced along with a few other people, says Earth. Yeah, and you know what? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to learn everything about the personal life of this news journalist or whatever in order to get breaking news or a news report from them. So I just don't agree with Molly. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. What, what we need to do now, though, is move on to the next topic tonight. So that, that guys, is only a small little bit. Little, little bitty bit. About what happened last night. And we've got so much more for you. Actually, let me see if my mods... Can you get me the Michelle Sabate toast video please i don't have the toast video i can probably find it if you guys will do me a solid if one of my mods knows where it's at drop it in general i'm looking for it right now before we go to betty i want to update you guys on the toast video oh how is it that michelle has many toast related controversies how, how? I just searched Michelle Sabate toast. There's a lot of toast related controversies related to Michelle. Oh, we got to reset. You missed a super chat. Thank you, Trisha. I will, I will look for it right now. We need to reset the lol meter. Um, Stitchin. Oh, thank you. Hey, oh, right back at you. Thank you, Stitchin. You guys are too supportive and I love you and appreciate you. Love you and appreciate you. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, but th there's a very specific clip from Michelle involving some toast. Oh, wrong one. I need to hit today. We'll see if the clip channels have it yet. If not, maybe one of my mods will find it. Let's take the word toast out. Okay, take toast out. Filter today. Special ingredients. Michelle goes live. What the hell? Six-year-old. Okay, hold on a minute. Did that title say what I think it says? A six-year-old intentionally... How can a six-year-old have intent? How does a six-year-old have intent, Molly? What? Hmm. I, thought, 
I thought six-year-olds could not have intent. Mm. Well, what do we have here? What? Making the headlines now. Oh, no. Oh, no, I guarantee it happened. But a six-year-old can't be charged with an intent, uh, like an in intent in that way, I don't think. Oh, the prosecutor is alleging that. Okay, Kendra, so it's not a bad title for Molly. Look, I, if Molly has a good title, if she's getting it right, I don't even need to see it. Um, oh, no, I believe it happened. In the world we live in, oh, yeah, Cambry, oh, yeah. In the world we live in, absolutely, I could believe something like that happened. I just don't, um, the, com the, the question that I was putting up is whether a six-year-old can have intent or not. Uh, legally, I don't think they can, but again, we'll, we'll look into it and see what's up. I don't try to report on stories that have to do with kids and child A, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but because it, this is like a kind of different story there, uh, we, might, we might look at it later. I'm not ready though. I, uh, maybe this is our clip. This might be our clip. Oh, I'm really scared of this. What is going on here? Some pasta? Um, okay. Guys, pasta. I can change Tara's number in my contact to say Santa Claus in my contact list. Yep, Tara, I can change your name to Santa Claus in my contact That's a lot of tomatoes. Did you know that? So when you call me Tara, I can change your name to Santa Claus. I can change to anything I want, Tara. It, Michelle just said she could change Tara's name to Santa Claus if she wants. Anything you want, you can change it. Right? You can change it to anything you want. Oh yeah, what is this? Is this some type of weird lasagna? And that is what Christy did to me. We're gonna have a little Christy thing. You know, I will say Michelle's looking good. Michelle looks healthy, I mean. She's looking healthy. She's looking like she's not completely about to jump through my screen and choke me out like Betty. I'm not telling you what I put in it. I, everything, the ingredients are in. Everything that I put in the ingredients are in. The directions of my recipe. All right, all good. Whoa! And we're going to stir that, and we're going to put a lid on it. That's a lot of pepper. I got to back the camera up for a Okay, this obviously isn't the video. Oh, we got her! We got her! Is it this one? No, this ain't it. No. See how many strange... Clips of, of Michelle just has so many weird clips out there. No, okay, so there's a clip of Michelle and she's talking on a piece of toast thinking that it's her phone. I think she put frozen ravioli in like that. Oh, okay. Go to tragic. Oh, wrong. Okay, okay, Remy, if that's not it, let me know. Let me know if you find it. And, and there's a lot of toast. <laughs> toast. Toast clips involving Michelle out there, so it's kind of hard. That was it? That last one? This one? This is from three months ago, though. She dialed the toast? She's gonna dial the toast? <gasps> she is! Oh my god. Okay, we found it. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what is going on with Michelle, but Michelle has has been caught trying to place a phone call on her toast. <laughs> I'm not even joking, y'all. I'm not even joking. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, look, look. Okay, so she's like, no, okay, here she goes. She's starting to dial. Now she's texting someone. She's hitting enter. I don't know if she's telling them to have a good night, drive home safe. Hit me up later. I think she just said hit me up later. Just said, Molly, I'm going to crash your stream and show my boobs. Um, because <laughs> she's done it. Um, yeah, she's saying, no, you did, Molly, you did. She, no, she just finished sending a text. She just finished sending a text. She just finished, she just finished sending. I need this clip. I need, I need, I need someone to clip what I just saw. 
Um, well, I have to see it again. I'm sorry. I know it's a short little clip, and I, I have to see it again. My God. Okay. Okay, so yeah, huh? Yeah. Yep, yep. Definitely saying... She's definitely arguing with Molly, I think, here. Oh, yeah, she's starting to fall over. She's barely catching herself. Uh-huh. Definitely. And watch. She, she's going to finish typing her sentence in just a second. And she's she's putting her putting her phone back in her pocket. She just sent a text message and put her phone back in her pocket. That's good stuff, man. That's some really on point typing. Uh. All right, next next clip. All right, here we go. Um, I want to take a look at her tags. I want to see what she does with her tags here. Oh, hell no. All right. I also want to do one little thing. I want a YouTube tags extractor. All right. I want to see what she actually puts in as her tags. I'm not a robot, bro. I'm not a robot, bro bot. Here we go. She ha she has no tags in this. I, you know, something that doesn't shock me that she doesn't have tags in this. Okay. So here's what she has. She's got hashtag Koberger, Kaylee, Madison, Zanna, Ethan, Case Discussion, Quentin Simon, M Michael Vaughn. Why is Quentin Simon's name in this? That's a little strange. I don't mind that she's using people that... I don't care if it's got the victims and stuff like that because, you know, these are tags people are going to search for, you think. So then she's got BHB supported creators. Chronicles Olivia, Molly, Justin, House of Williams, Dolly Vision, It's a Crime, Ten to Life, Plunder, True Crime. Then she's got Idaho 4, Brian, Highly Madison's see she's she's putting she's spamming their tags which is extremely weird. People normally do not spam tags like this. Stalker theory. Quentin Simon Koberger major developments in both cases. See how she's like she's done this on purpose. She's done this on purpose. Um, and she might talk about the Quentin Simon case in this. Who knows? Uh, and she's done it again. Yeah, this is really messed up. Um, and she's done it again and again and again and again and again and again. Uh, and, the, and the weird thing is when I look to see if she actually had tags, because you have your description, your title, and your tags. When I look to see what her tags were, um, there was none there. Like, I'll show you the tags of this real quick. I'll give you my tags of my video that I just uploaded to UniRock2 here. Well, I don't want to bore you. We'll do it in a minute. But, because I, I want to show you what tags are supposed to look like. Anyway, I don't know what to do. I almost wish Navy was around for this. Because I don't know what to do here. Um, I don't know what to do here. I, I don't know if I even want to see this. Because she claims she's going to be playing leaked audio of one of the victims screaming and it's so sad and I don't know what to think man I don't know if I like this or not. I don't like this but we're just gonna take here I'm gonna put it on if I put it on a higher playback speed at least it won't sound as it won't you know you get me well good morning YouTube we're back to the emoji yes we are yes we are it's getting harder and harder but I want to make sure we start our coffee club on time 
when I'm home. So this is an effort to get our coffee club back on track since I've been traveling so very much. Buffalo Mountain Girl, our Mountain Tennessee Girl, <clears throat> first to say hi to Bullhorn Betty and chat. Just an old lady followed by Jara Family Vibes. And she's like, it was weird. Her live came up for 22 seconds and went off. It's because I was... Oh my God, dude. I can't do it. Like, I know my streams aren't that great or anything, y'all. But if I was ever... If I ever seem this fucking desperate and bad at this, Jesus. Like, that's gonna hit that's gonna hurt my uh, notifications. See my last comment? <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do. I guess I should have probably just rolled with it, right? <laughs> Instead of stopping it and setting up a second one. But I was so shocked. Uh comment in general. I was thinking Molly kind of reminds me of those psychic types way back in the day. They hung around crime scenes to try to add themselves to the scene, hoping to make cash off of a strander by and an officer in frame with clout. Weird that Molly found a way to adapt it to YouTube, minus the psychic shtick. No, nah, good point, our top. And Rachel's been really getting on me to upload a video about um, that one famous psychic from the 90s. I guess there's, there's some, like, there was, like, a documentary done about her. And um, it, the story's, like, really cool. So I think I might upload a video about that. And I think it'll kind of mix together with what we're looking at. But no, great point, bro. Great point. I hit the, the live button that I'm like, oh, crap. So sorry about that, guys. But I'm glad each and every one of you guys are here. We almost have 300 people in the chat already this morning. And I've just started talking. And uh, so you guys are in here. Please go out. You know, I don't know if you can necessarily feel good about having people in your chat when you're clickbaiting and exploiting a story like this, right? Like, if I have two or 300 people in my chat, I'm getting those views through clowning on you guys, being comedic and reacting to you guys. So I don't feel good or bad about it. I just, you know, it's normal stuff. I, I don't know how you guys don't feel bad. You know, you almost feel shocked. It's like Betty's like, oh my God, I'm shocked that there's 200 people in my chat, right? Um, is what she just said. Well, what do you think's going to happen when you freaking clickbait the names of the um, victims and stuff like 90 times in your description? And what do you, what do you expect? People that are searching for that stuff's going to pop in probably, right? Why are you so shocked? Is it, are you just saying this because you don't, you're trying to put up a front like, oh, I'm surprised that people came in here now that I put all those, that I repeated the names of the victims 56 times in my description. And don't even tell me she didn't do it. She's got the names of these people like just, they're just spammed in her description. I've never seen anything like this. You know, I've seen people type paragraphs that mentions people's names while they're describing their video in the description. Where's my description, man? Let me just show you what the description of this video looks like. And that way you'll kind of have, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying if I show you my description. Because, you know, I, I want you to, like, uh, you know, kind of get what I'm saying, right? So here's what a normal description should look like. So they've gone a step, a leap further. Molly, and, uh, Molly Golightly is jelly of the attention the Idaho sus is getting. Not joking. Bullhorn Betty is LARPing as a reporter after Idaho said no to protesters and internet sleuths and i've got dre mccray molly golightly uni rock rock a lot marvon mccray which i need to remove those actually i just you know this is a live stream so it kind of carries the last ones forward i'll take those out though i'll do it right now um WACB, chris hansen nate the lawyer boozy boozy todd chrisley chrisley knows best lb and leslie bass uh obviously my old tag list carried forward because that'll happen when you redo it right but this is normal to have the tags that you're going to talk about in your description. I just need to update mine. Though, so you got how to support my show. You got a link to my Discord. You got the join channel to both my channels. And you've got a fair use. Uh, or you've got my my little thing with Amazon and, and you know, Unirock and all that. And then you've got fair use statement and, your, and the link to Restream. Restream automatically injects that in. So... When you look at Betty's and you see she's got her tags, which, okay, fine, tag them once, tag them twice. I don't think that'd be too strange. But when you go down, let's count them. One, two, three, we'll do three. This will be three, four, five, six. I don't even know. I'm not going to include this, but I have no clue what justice for monkey or justice for Michael is, I don't know. Um, and then you got seven, we're on seven, right? And now we've got eight, nine, 10, 11, okay? 
So you see what I'm saying here? Um, whether or not she's updated her tags before or after her stream, of course, I need to do mine after or now. Um, the point that I'm making about this, she's got these tags repeated nine times. And there's probably a reason for that. There probably is a reason she's repeated the tags nine times minimum. I'm sure, you know, if I was really a stickler about counting, she probably repeated them more like 10. So there's definitely something weird already right there. Um, I, you know, even if she would have repeated it three times, just so you know, I just want to be up front. Um, repeating the tags three times is not uh, completely... Some, some creators take this rule of YouTube called the rule of three, and they think it means you go in your description and you put the tags three times in your description. That's not what the rule of three means. The rule of three is a pretty famous amongst YouTube creators trick for your tags. What it means in the title of your video, the description of the video, and the tags, the actual tag section of your video, you want to have the main tags that you're talking about repeat three times in those three places. So a total of the title of your video, if, I'm, if the main point of this video is Idaho, Betty, and Molly, we'll say that. So I should make sure that in the title, it references those three things. In the description, it references those three things. And in the tags of the video, it references those three things. So the way that Betty has this, she has Idaho and Koberger here in the title and then has nothing in her tag section and in her description, she's repeated the names of the victims and the murmur like 10, nine or 10 times. And I just want to make sure I'm uh, very specific. That's the criticism. This is very strange. This isn't normal. Now let's hear what she says. Hit the like While button. I update my Many tags people here in my upset description. Bullhorn Betty for asking the right questions. And this is probably why they do not have successful channels and part of the sub squad. We ask the right questions. We ask the tough questions. I say the things that many of you guys are thinking, right? Many people oh, are thinking shit. the stuff. No I did not mean to take Leslie Bass out because we're talking about Leslie Bass a little bit. Um, Nobody wants to say it because they don't want to offend people. Well, don't worry about it. You know, Full Horn Betty's a little offensive every now and again, right? I don't really give a crap what they have to say. Listen. Well, listen. Well, listen, Betty. I was try trying to do it like you. Well, listen. Uh, this is what I mean, though. You're offensive in the aspect of being nasty, rude, or disgusting, okay? So you should care because you're the one talking about the victim's justice and those things. So if I were to choose to be offensive, which I don't think I've been offensive at all, this entire stream, my last stream, I, I wouldn't know where I have been offensive. Um, even if I chose to be a little bit edgy or offensive while I'm commentating or joking, I'm clowning on people that are exploiting these stories. So it's not as atrocious to make jokes while you're doing that. This is why when we covered the Marvon story and it was the focal point of what we were covering, we made sure not to joke around a lot. And you guys have noticed I've been joking around since we stopped covering that story as much, right? So anyway, you feel me? Okay. At the end of the day, Dylan Mortensen was in the house. She was uh, alerted over three times to the point Some that she got up out of bed. What, she was dead asleep, woke up out of bed because of a loud noise. She hears crying. She hears a male's voice. She hears somebody saying somebody's in the house. She hears all these things and she has a masked intruder walk all past right. her and she waits eight hours to call law enforcement while she sits there. And oh, I can't. I, let me just finish this. Bullhorn Betty. True crime. Lie crime. Uh, YouTube, YouTuber. Okay, I updated uh, my description tags. Now, this is the important part. This is the first thing I want you to hear. I don't want to miss it. I got to focus here. So let's, eh, 1.5 is fine. Here we go. I want you to think about the story, what we know about the story so far, and think about the woman who had not known what had happened until like the earlier the next morning remember there was someone who was in the house when this stuff happened and they didn't realize anything had happened until the next morning and called the cops at what like 4 a.m or something remember that okay so listen to what she has to say 
She hears crying. She hears a male's voice. She hears somebody saying somebody's in the house. She hears. Lauren, thank you for typing that because I, I, I didn't want to have to make the claim. Lauren says, notice what Dylan didn't report. According to the affidavit, she didn't report hearing screams. Exactly. When you hear Betty and Justin and Molly, this is what they do. They, they will grab at the controversy and make it the details of the facts of what they're talking about. And just like Lauren said, which Lauren has gone through the affidavit and talked to me about the affidavit after she went through it, right? She's been following this case very closely. And Lauren has read what Dylan had said, which didn't include screams. But for some reason, you're going to hear Betty claim that she did hear screams so that she can get outraged, all right? These things, and she has a masked intruder walk past her, and she waits eight hours to call law enforcement. She didn't see a masked intruder walk past her. This was a party house. She saw a male in a mask walk by. Now, I don't know about you, but I was at the grocery store today and last night with my daughter. Both times we went, I saw a bunch of people wearing masks. Why are they acting like this person walking by wearing a mask is some kind of shocking thing. Number one, is it, is it abnormal to have a person walk through the house late at night? No, it was a party house. It was like a bunch of people there, constantly there, in a college or party type of environment, according to what I read, right? Lauren says that's accurate. She saw a man in a mask walk past her. Exactly. She didn't see an intruder walk by because she didn't know that this person was a damn intruder, right? And didn't, the, didn't Brian know these people anyway? Wouldn't that not make him an intruder? I mean, he could have been an intruder coming in at that time of night, but a party house is known for people walking in and out at all times of the day and night. It's also known for people being drunk, if not high, while they're there. It's also known for people passing out and falling asleep and then waking up later hungover. So when I read about this person and people were telling me like, yeah, someone in Discord was telling me like, yeah, it's really weird that this person didn't call the cops earlier. I was like, I don't think it's weird at all. If you've ever been to a college party, a college party house or any type of like, you know, party like this, um, it's not strange to any degree. People are expecting fighting, loud noises, yelling, screaming and stuff like that. Um, again, Dylan or, or the person that was, I, I might be saying the wrong name, but the person who watched this person walk by, as we have all seen, they did not hear any like murmur. We'll say they didn't hear a murmur. What they were, he, what they heard was normal for the place that they were at, right? They didn't claim to hear screams or anything like that. And some people are like, well, why wouldn't she have heard it? could have been high she could have been drunk she could have been like there's a million reasons why the accusation is either that this person didn't call the cops because they were in on it or this person didn't call the cops because they were partying and drunk or something and and i have seen no evidence that this person was working with um Koberger. he now again they could have been I'm just saying I have seen no evidence that they were working with Koberger or they did something to protect Koberger. Are you feeling me? Now, if you, if you see any evidence, send it in to me, right? Lauren says there's no references to hearing screaming in the affidavit. The camera with the audio picked up a loud thud and the dog barking. Exactly. That's what I recall, right? Jack's mom says it's not weird. Also, she was up until after 4.30 a.m. sleeping until noon, possibly hungover. It's 100% normal. Thank you. Exactly. Now, again, if there is something weird about it, I'll report it to you. I'll let you know. We'll talk about it. But the thing that I don't like about these stories is that a lot of people on the Internet who call themselves sleuths or Internet sleuths or researchers or whatever are not those things. They are conspiracy theorists. They're trying to look at every detail and then figure out how it's a mystery or how it's exciting or how it's strange instead of looking at the truth and then identifying what is strange or what is a mystery truthfully to you. This is the indicator between a good true crime YouTuber or reporter or whatever and a bad one. Betty 
is a bad one. Molly and Justin are bad ones. If they were allowed to report on the news and they were given the ability to do that, we would be screwed as a society. <laughs> I'm telling you now, they can't tell the truth if it was staring them in the face because the truth isn't going to make them a lot of money. They need to embellish. They need to add things. They need outrage. They need to do things that will make people listen. And because they can't go out and grab a couple YouTubers acting cringy like I can, they have to curb the information, change the information, or change the subject to be that way. And it's why it's exploitative. It is a literal piece of proof, piece of evidence towards why Betty and Molly and Justin and LB are exploitative. While she sits there and listens to her roommate crying on the floor. See, and I hope, uh, where is it? Damn it. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? I just had it. Damn it. I need that little image, y'all. I need that little image. Hold up. I'm going to grab it. See, Betty, you know what you need, Betty? Do you know what Betty needs? Betty needs um, this. This is what Betty needs. Yo, Popo, we got one for you. How do we report people on the internet who are doing this to the Popo? Because Betty and Molly and Justin, tonight, I've shown you them doing this because they cannot tell the truth because they are trying to make money off of the subject, off of the tragedy. The content is them making money off of the tragedy. It's why they constantly lie. They constantly don't uh, frame things properly, frame things as the truth, frame things logically. Get me? Betty needs to fit, just like Molly and Justin need to be, re need to be investigated by uh, Moscow police for this right here. Investigators have been monitoring online activities related to the ongoing and active cases and are aware of a large amount of rumors and misinformation being shared as well as harassing and threatening behavior towards potentially involved parties. Anybody engaging in threats or harassment, whether in person, online, or otherwise, needs to understand they could subject themselves to criminal charges. I believe that these people we've looked at tonight meet that criteria because they are choosing to willingly lie and willingly present things in a deceptive way to the internet, causing people to go around and spread more misinformation. That misinformation with Betty seeks to have people think that this person who was this close to a serial killer had her friends murdered in the same home as her is involved without having any real discussion actual factual reasoning to why the facts that she's using to dub this person as a piece of shit as betty's trying to do inciting her audience and the people that watch her to go out there and hate this person and possibly harass this person or spam this person like we heard molly and justin say um they are lying in order to get you to do it as she dies i am sorry yes i feel ultra bad for whatever dylan mortensen went through no you don't you don't feel see this is this is another reason why we know that when you say you feel bad about what these people go through you're lying because if you did feel bad about what these people went through, you wouldn't lie about what they went through, miscategorize, mis mischaracterize what they're going through. I feel ultra bad about that. Ultra, ultra. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's why you're saying the word ultra. That's why you're using such an inappropriate word to describe how you feel. Ultra is a very inappropriate word to describe how bad you feel about this. And the reason you chose that word is because you're lying. She's going to have to deal with this the rest of her life. That makes my heart ache. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make, no, you just lied. You literally just said that she heard screams, but chose not to call the cops. She didn't want to help her friends. She wanted to let them lay there and bleed out instead of getting them um, treatment and getting them an ambulance as soon as possible to hopefully save their lives. That's what you just said. She heard the screams and did, chose not to do anything and all this shit. Now you're trying to walk back what you said. Okay. Okay. Act. But there are four okay. families. Four families, which I'm, I'm sure are very, very thankful that they have an eyewitness to this crime. An eyewitness to... An eyewitness to the crime? I would think it's an eyewitness to a masked individual walking by at a certain time. 
I think that's what they are an eyewitness towards. I don't think they're an eyewitness to the crime. See, this is another thing. You need to watch what you're saying. I don't think you're smart enough to watch what you're saying. I don't think you understand things enough to watch what you're saying. Either way, though, again, you just said a masked infiltrator walked by and she chose to do nothing instead of framing it the correct way where people wearing masks walked by all the time in a party house after COVID and it's not strange. She described the assailant's height, weight, and bushy eyebrows. You know, that is, that is amazing news that there's an eyewitness to this quadruple homicide, okay? Uh, she's an eyewitness. I don't think she's an eyewitness to the homicide, but okay, fine. I guess you could verbal, uh, you know, you could say it that way. There, there, there is the silver lining. However, I am angry. I am very angry about her actions. And you are. Why? Wouldn't you need her to do something wrong before you're angry about her actions? If she didn't hear the attack because she was asleep, because she was drunk, because she was whatever, maybe she had TV playing, music playing while she was asleep and drunk. Why would you be mad? It's not like she decided to do this at an orphanage while she was supposed to be watching the front desk. And if you're going to be mad at her for, for, for passing out drunk at night in a party house, why aren't you mad at the victims for passing out? I'm not mad at the victims for passing out in the party house or whatever. But why aren't you, Betty? Because they did the same thing this person did. This person just didn't have this dude come into their room and do this to them. So it just is sick. You don't realize the things you're saying also apply to the victims about this person. You don't, you don't think about that because you're not smart enough to comprehend it because you're not trying to logically break this down. You're trying to say things in a way to generate content and to get, you know, clicks and all this to entertain your audience. I, and I'm sure many people around the world and around this. Yes, Peggy says Bullhorn is looking for a reason to justify her irrational anger. Thank you, Betty. Exactly. Exactly. And Betty's irrational anger leads to not just misinformation and lies and uh, lots of other things related to the internet, but you, you know, you also all out there know based on the stuff that uh, has been shared about her and what she chooses to do, her irrational anger leads to people being injured, having their teeth knocked loose, and almost being choked to death. This country are very upset about her actions. No, it, no one is upset about her actions unless you're going to be upset about the actions right now with the information we have until we have different information if you're upset about the actions of this person you've got to be upset about the actions of the victims because again the victims did the same thing that this person did these people all got they they partied or they had a good time maybe some of them drank maybe some of them didn't whatever they went to their respective rooms where they were sleeping and they passed out the victims had this man walk into their room and do this to them. This, one, this person was lucky enough that, 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 that he didn't walk into their room. Literally, you have to start thinking about what you're saying. Now, that is with the information that we have right now of what happened. Right? If, if you're going to tell me that they've come out and admitted that Dylan decided to not call the cops but heard everything or dylan is lying or yada 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 then i will update what i'm saying but as it sits dylan didn't hear the screams dylan didn't know what had happened or else dylan why would dylan do that anyway unless dylan's working with brian why would dylan not call the cops you know what i'm saying like why would dylan you know once dylan knew that this person had left why wouldn't Dylan called the cops. And if Dylan didn't like call the cops right away because Dylan didn't want to also be murmured, then you know, what's the problem with that? Right? If Dylan's waiting until she hears the guy go away so she can have an opportunity to call the cops without having him rush in and kill her before she can finish her sentence and get the cops there, right? You know what I'm saying? Nothing makes sense with Betty, Molly, and Justin. 
unless you're ask unless you look at it from the perspective that they're just trying to spam this shit to get money. I'm sure hindsight 2020, her herself is probably very upset with herself for her actions. No, I don't think she is unless you want to say the victims are upset about their actions. And I don't think anyone should feel that the victims, other than you, Betty, because you haven't explained what the difference is between the victims and how they went to bed and how Dylan went to bed. You haven't explained the difference. You haven't explained what makes Dylan wrong or what ma makes Dylan a bad person. You did lie and say that Dylan heard screaming, which is not true. It's not in the affidavit. The opposite is. But Lauren says, I'm sure her testimony will explain why, and I'm also sure that she wishes she'd acted differently now. We don't always do the right thing in a crisis. I, that's the problem, though. I don't think that's, I don't think she would, Lauren, because I don't, th from what I read, and you can, you can um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that Dylan didn't know there was a crisis until she called the cops. So Dylan didn't hear anything because she was passed out drunk or whatever she was. And then early at like 4 a.m. or something, or I don't know what time it was, but it was when the cops got called. I thought it was because Dylan had noticed something had happened finally and called the police. So if I'm wrong about that, let me know. But that's what I thought. It ha that's what I had understood had happened, which if, with that being the case, Dylan didn't do anything wrong. Now, again, Dylan could have done something wrong. I'm only going off of what, I, what the information I have right now. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break this down. Kendra, hold on. Your last comment. Let me see. She heard what she thought was Gonzalez playing with a dog. A man say, it's okay, I'll help you, and cries is what the affidavit says. Yeah. I, yeah, I said that earlier. I said, um, I read Lauren. Uh, Lauren typed earlier that, Gonz is, is it Gonzalez? Is it Dylan Gonzalez? Is that why I keep, th there's two different names. I'm just going to say Dylan. I'd rather say the first and last name. According to what Lauren told me, all that this person heard was uh, what, what she thought was uh, dog noises, someone playing with a dog or a dog barking, right? Yeah, I read Lauren's comment earlier, and that's what it said. Um, oh, her name is Kaylee. Then why, is, why did she say her name? Was, I was only repeating what fucking Betty said. Betty said Dylan, so now, okay. <laughs> you just said about her being passed out drunk. Well, I, I didn't say she was passed out drunk. I said she could have been. It was a party house. I was just going by the... The, um, you know, going by what had been reported that this is a party house and then why it's not weird for in a party house. I didn't mean she was passed out drunk. I mean, it's just at a party house. These are the different when you when you read it's a party house, you you then know people most likely could be passed out drunk or high or not. There you go. Or. You could also look at it like people come in and out at all day and night, and it's not considered to be a uh, red flag. Whereas in a normal home, someone coming in past a certain time when you've locked the door, you call the cops if you hear that. At a party house, you don't, you know? Especially like a college area kind of party house. And that's what I mean when I look at Betty and others trying to say that this person did something wrong or say that they heard screams or say something else. Sorry, my daughter needed me one second. Well, I'm working, so I didn't have my phone, crazy pants. Be good, be safe, don't do anything wrong. Okay, sorry about that. Um I'll go I'll go ahead and I've been I've been live for a while. We'll go ahead and end this. We'll talk we'll pick it up later. Um anyway, let me go ahead and explain what I'm trying to say and my issue with what Betty's saying. Let me sum it up. I believe we have a video from LB that I wanted to look at too about this story. Maybe we'll get it tonight. Uh let's 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 figure that out though. Okay, let me get my billboard of doom. All right. So, just so you know, I'm not here reporting on uh, the murmur. I'm reporting on their coverage, these people and their coverage. So, what I did 
was just talk to people who had studied the affidavit and ask them for some details, basically got the basic information about it because I honestly don't need the details of the affidavit myself to cover what these people are covering uh, or cover what they're saying since I'm not covering what they're covering. Okay, we good? We set up? All right. Here, throw it. So, issue number one. The Betty just described what this person, I guess you guys are saying her name is Kylie. Let's just say she's witness number one. <laughs> so, witness number one wasn't murmured. She was okay. And she had saw, you know, the... Uh, Brian leaving wearing a mask. Or at least that's what the cops are saying. That's what she's saying. The issue is, from what you just heard from Betty, Betty takes, you know, this thing that's out on social media, which it's everywhere out on social media. There's a lot of people that are saying um, that I just actually reacted to it on Twitter before this stream. So one woman had typed, why didn't the friend call the police earlier I think she had something to do with it so there's this big conspiracy theory that this person has something to do with it and does she or doesn't she we don't know we don't have the information what we know right now or what what we've been kind of told based on the investigation is that she's also a victim she's not a perpetrator or she wasn't uh working with the guy and according to Kendra and Lauren what she heard wasn't screams or wasn't a fight. It was noises, like dog noises. Or what she thought she heard was normal sounds for the area. So, trying to get you all to understand um, why I think it's fucked up for Betty and Molly. Molly did this too, by the way. And them to characterize it this way is because... A normal home and a party home are very different and I'm not gonna say that it's a party home but it was a home where they partied and people came in night and day and walked in and out that's how it was described to me so someone coming in at night is almost expected someone walking through the hallway wearing a mask is expected what Molly and the rest of the people out there that are framing it this way are doing is basically saying that the fact that this woman didn't call the cops earlier means that she did something wrong. And that's only the case if she did something wrong, right? <laughs> it's not just the case because she saw the guy walk out late at night in a normal home. Yeah, it would be weird. It would be like, yeah, she did something wrong and maybe she's covering for the bad guy, right? Um... And when you have a the type of home, like let's just imagine that instead of it being where it was, let's imagine that it happened in a hotel. So this person, these the people that were murdered were in this these hotel rooms over here, and this person was in a hotel room right here. Would we all still be holding the same opinion just because this person saw somebody walk down the hotel hall late at night and didn't call the cops or didn't do anything about it, right? You would only expect this person to call the cops if they had heard screaming, if they had saw blood on his clothes or or whatever, or he had threatened her or something. So I think you could relate the home that they were in due to the traffic and what was expected of the traffic in the home more to a hotel or a motel than you could um, or an Airbnb. Actually, an Airbnb would almost be perfect, really. It, it'd be one of the best comparisons to the difference between a regular home and a, and a party house or, or a college party house or something, right? So, now, I don't know whether um, this girl got drunk or high. I said that earlier, but I could have misspoken between. I'm just saying, it's one of the reasons why no normal person out there is just assuming that this person did something wrong until we have more details, until we actually know what happened. Though, that's not exciting. It's not mysterious for us to look at this person basically behaving normal with the um, environment she's in, uh, seeing this dude walk down the hall and not calling the cops at night, or, you know, hearing what she thought was 
a dog squeaking or barking or a dog crying or something and not calling the cops, Betty and the rest of the true crime, lie crime community want you to believe and get outraged that this person did something wrong and has to live with this or something. This person's probably thankful that they also weren't murdered while at the same time are mourning their friends. They're I would doubt that they're sitting there blaming themselves for not doing something different to save them. But that's what Betty's say. That's what Betty's kind of putting out. You follow me? You feel me? So I hope I've gotten the, the commentary a little more down pat there, right? So I'm not going to sit here and pussyfoot around with people that are pissed off at bull um, she said she saw him and was frightened by him. It's her words. Okay, well, still though, I, I, you, is it normal to call the cops just because you see some dude that you're scared walk down the, down the hallway? I don't think so, right? Warn Betty for Feel speaking me? her mind and speaking the truth. That is something I have promised each and every one of you guys I will do. Um, would you? Would you call the cops just because some dude walks down the hall and you're scared of the dude? Unless you had a reason to call the cops, I don't think you would, you know? I mean, what I'm saying is that the guy walking through the hallway, based on what we have, in, based on the data that we have in front of us, just seems like the same kind of thing. Some fucking creepy dude walking down the hall isn't abnormal in that scenario is what I'm trying to say. I don't mind taking the hit. Hell, out of everything I have been through, who gives a shit at this point? What anybody says about me, right? At this point, who cares? Um, the bottom line is, as we speak... Sonny says uh, he should explain. So he she should apply the same logic to the alleged suspect. He wasn't a little kid either, but that involves thinking all on Molly's behalf. My apologies. I thought you were talking about Betty. Reality here. And if reality is offensive or offends you or is some kind of, you know, causes or promotes. Nerd says, no, I get the way I get. She was in shock and terrorized. And that's all we need to understand. The party house stuff is irrelevant. No, it really isn't. If we're wondering why. So, so wait a minute. Are you saying she knew that the crime had happened earlier? You're saying that's in the affidavit? Because Lauren told me it wasn't in the affidavit. So that, that would be the thing that would be the, the changing information. So let me know. Real quick so we can move on, nerd. See, I'm under the impression that this woman didn't know that the crime was committed until she called the cops. Whether she was scared of the guy, whether when she saw him walk by, whether the other details are there or not... If she knew that the crime was committed and decided not to call the cops for like six hours or something, she did something wrong. If she waited until she thought the guy left to call the cops, she didn't do anything wrong. Lauren says there's nothing to indicate she knew that anyone was killed or hurt until she left her room at noon. See, Lauren, thank you. And if that's the case, then I still hold to my commentary that I just gave. So I still hold to my commentary. I... Again, you can be frightened by some masked weirdo walking by. Is it normal for masked weirdos to walk out of certain environments? Yes, it is. And so you wouldn't call the cops if some weird looking masked guy walked by in those environments. If she didn't call the cops when she should have called the cops, she did something wrong. And based on the information we have right now, she, there was nothing indicating she should have called the cops before she did, is, is my point. Okay, I think I said it better that time, right? PST, okay. TD, P PTSD in your life, then maybe this is not the best channel for you to be on. But Hold on, wait. I don't think it's the best channel for anyone to be on is the point we've all been saying for a while now. TD, but P PTSD in your life, then maybe this is not the best channel for you to be on. So the people who you beat to a bloody pulp and tried to choke to death, they shouldn't watch your channel, right? Okay, good. Because they probably have experienced PTSD because of you. Yeah. But when you're on here, I'm not going to filter my conversation. I'm not going to have my audience filter their conversation. And again, if some, some new revelation comes to light where she should have called the cops sooner, let me know and I'll update what I think, right? I'm just trying to get the point across to why it's egregious for them to act like we should be mad what they're acting like is we should be mad at this person for not calling the cops where the the affidavit and the data we have right now doesn't show that so when that changes let me know if it does i don't think it will but it might all that is required here is to be respectful to one another that's it why you're not respectful 
you yell and scream in bullhorns acting like the most disrespectful person ever, but you expect people to be respectful in your chat? You can't be respectful in public, but you expect them to be in your chat? <laughs> you can't be respectful when you report on something, but you expect people to be in your chat? This is called being a hypocrite, Betty. This is why it's so strange for you all to act like you should have some control, and in that controlled area, which is only applies to your channels, the control is you all have to watch how you act. You do it, Molly does it, the rest of them all do it. But in reality, you all don't even watch how you act in effing public. You don't even watch how you act on a report or, or at a scene. If someone angers you, you start to curse at them as I showed in a couple video clips while you were on scene. Some Someone leaving an area who sees a reporter and decides to curse out a reporter, that reporter is going to act professional. They're going to say, you know what? I am an intruder or someone. I don't want to use that word because we just used it. I am um, a, a person who probably normally shouldn't be in their community. I shouldn't be in this area. I'm here because I'm reporting on things. And the local people are yelling at us because they don't want the reporters here. So the reporter is going to react professionally to that happening. You, Betty, when that has happened to you, when you're on scene pretending to be a reporter you curse them out you yell and spit and then they say why did you spit on me and then you lie about spitting on them these are the reasons why you are criticized it's also what makes it so silly to think you can demand civility from other people when you can't even control yourself say what you mean mean what you say but don't say it mean if i choose to do that you don't mean what you say or say what you mean because if you did, you would keep your commentary relevant to the truth. You invent your commentary based on what you think will entertain your audience. You will report on the cleaning crew backing out of the scene when, it, like, like I showed in my upload today. So for the last few right here, you will re you will flip out about the cleaning crew and act like it's the biggest report ever when you have nothing to justify why it's the biggest report ever. Also, when we go offline, y'all, check out my upload on Unirock 2 because I haven't been uploading regularly, so I need you to support me on my upload at Unirock 2. I can't. It is my channel. However. And, oh, Julie makes a great point. And these idiots, BHB and MGL, ran away from a slight-built woman with zero weapons who wanted to talk. They should shut their mouths. Exactly. You know, and it, that also goes to show the pro, how the protests blew up in their face. And now they're reporters. Molly's a reporter. And Molly's reporting is going after the family members of Brian. Betty's a reporter. And in this video so far, she's been going after the, the, the victim, um, the victim's friends that was in the house that night. Right? You feel me? It's almost like, do as I say, not as I do, type of thing in here. And I have no problem acknowledging that. No. What now? However, it's almost like, do as I say, not as I do, type of thing in here. And I have no problem acknowledging that. So you're acknowledging that it's a do as I say, not as I do. So you're acknowledging you're not professional not respectful you don't act like a good person you don't act like a person that that has any type of you know professionality or respect or anything you're a disgusting loud mouthed nasty person who does nothing but spread anger and hostility and hate everywhere she goes at least you're acknowledging that i can't even believe she just acknowledged it but if you acknowledge it do you not understand how because it is a hypocrisy because it's a lie. No one has to respect it. Did you lose that about life? When you lie and it's not true, others don't have to bow down to your lies. We don't have to do that. When you act like a hypocrite, we don't have to bow down to your hypocrisy. We don't have to be we we don't have to treat you with respect in any way shape or form when you don't treat anyone else with respect in any shape or form you feeling me
We also don't have to believe that you care about victims or you care about these crimes when in reality you show us every person you interact with you're very disgusting to. A, it is a contradiction. And I know Betty doesn't understand what a contradiction is. So um, let me let me say like maybe if we were all uh, at, a, at a grocery store that doesn't have any apples and you keep screaming you want us to buy apples, get you apples, find me apples right now, we don't have to fucking go do it. We don't have to just deliver it to you, right? Just because you keep, you know, going against reality and screaming that you need the damn apples and that you should have your apples, right? None. I don't know. I don't know of a better analogy. I stand behind what I said yesterday, 100%. You can't stand behind things you say 100% ever if you tell lies constantly. And that's one of the big issues. I think it's also why you have such a problem with people that look at you and laugh when you try to act like we should take your word to something. We don't take your word to anything because you can't. Because you can't tell the truth. You feel me? I am. I don't want Dylan Mortensen to be unnecessarily... See, she's saying Dylan Mortensen again, but she keeps talking about Dylan Mortensen in the relation that she's the woman that was inside the house. So maybe that's where I've got it wrong. Betty keeps making it sound like that woman's name is Dylan. So maybe that's why I'm 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 like mixing up the, the name Dylan here, right? Bothered. That's why I have a chat. She just did it again. She just said that the lady's name is Dylan. But you guys said that her name is like Kaylee or something, right? Oh, it is Dylan? <laughs> we'll figure it out later. I'm just going to call her witness. You feel me? At where you guys can explain. Okay. Okay. So it is Dylan. Okay. Someone in the chat said it was Kaylee. I'm going to say that it's witness. So when we talk about the woman that was in the house, watched them walk by, I'm going to call them the witness. Press your viewpoints here without... Dylan is the witness. Okay. ...going out and bothering somebody else. But I can tell you, Okay, let me rewind this because I want to hear what she has to say here before we get out of here. I don't want Dylan Mortensen to be unnecessarily bothered. That's why I have a chat where you... Unnecessarily bothered. See how you say that? You don't want her to be unnecessarily bothered, which is you conveying to the people watching that you do want her bothered to some degree. She shouldn't be bothered at all. At all. Just like you should not. If you're watching my show, I'm going to tell you straight here. Unless you want to be a cringe lord, do not bother the people that are involved with this story. Unless you want to be looked at like Betty and Molly and Justin and them, don't bother the mother of Brian. Don't bother the sister. Don't bother the witness. Don't bother anybody. If you want to try and get an interview with them or tweet at them on social media or anything like that, Wait until the trial's over. Wait till this dies down. Because, again, one thing that makes them look so bad for constantly uh, meddling themselves into the stories they cover is because, on one hand, Betty and Molly and them claim they care about the victims. They care about the witness. They care about the damage that's been done by Brian. And they care about the the problems created by the situation at the same time they don't care to try and inflame the pain the mother is feeling the sister is feeling the brother the, the father is feeling or the witness is feeling through uh pushing themselves into the story it's another hypocrisy it's another lie from betty and molly and the rest of them you guys can express your viewpoints here that's why Betty keeps saying her full name. She hates the poor girl, says Kathy. You know, listen, I understand people having anger or resentment towards someone who may have made choices that could have negatively affected the victims. And that's the, the idea that's being given by Betty and Molly and Justin that Dylan or the witness has done something that negatively affected them. And again, we're not going to truly know until the police have been able to do all their work, get to the truth of what happened, charge everybody involved 
for negligence, everybody involved for when they're who was involved. And so that's why it, it is responsible for us to keep an open mind because regardless of what the affidavit even said, if the affidavit got the information about the witness from the witness's own words, then it could completely change next week or next month or during the trial. You feel me? Legato says, college dorm, heard woman screaming. He's unaliving me. Fortunately, emotionally, not physically. I only called 911. Not surprised that DM didn't call. Hold on. Wait, dead Legato. That's the thing, though. Lauren's saying she read the affidavit, and it didn't say that in the affidavit, though. So let me just make sure I'm on track. I, I, and I don't want to argue about what the affidavit says. It's one reason I didn't want to cover it. <laughs> like, um, oh, you're saying, well, see, that's the thing. Like, based on what I know right now, there are people that believe the witness heard something that should have made her call the cops after he left. But then other people are saying that that wasn't the case. So give me time to actually, you know, process everything. And that's going to be a week or two from now. And we'll come back to whether that's the case or not. You know what I'm saying? Without going out and bothering somebody else. But I can tell you. Raz says it could be, it could turn out the police could have been contacted sooner. Very true. Uh, there's nothing harder or more specific than that yet. Exactly, Raz. Thank you, Jesus. Exactly. Before the cops are going to know whether a witness or whether someone should have called the cops sooner or later these are specific details these aren't generalistic details um also i guarantee you let's just pretend for a minute that the witness did hear the entire event let's just say she heard it in graphic detail do you think that this witness is in the right mindset a day or two later to be able to um verbally describe things to a perfect T based on reality, right? And this is why an investigation doesn't take a day or a week or a month. It can take a very long amount of time. And that's why details can change because some details come from someone's testimony and sometimes a person's testimony is affected by witnessing a tragic event, witnessing a murmur. And that's the only reason I keep saying before we can really trust details that are extremely specific, an amount of time has to go by for all of that work to get done, and it's just too early to really even go there. There are many, 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 probably a hundred to a thousand times more people that are just as angry as me than the people that are pissed off that I said something. No, no, only if it's true, all right? So if what you're saying is true, and this woman... um or this person, again, Dylan could be a man now. <laughs> so this person, the friend, only if it's true that they should have called the cops sooner or they did something wrong, would anybody be mad at them? And again, you have an anger problem, Betty. We can't trust what you get mad at or what you don't get mad at because you don't do it to a healthy degree. You also don't you also have a truth problem, a lying problem, a violence problem. All of these things about you makes it to where your commentary is absolutely useless in these situations. Ooh, sue me. No, no, th that's the point. Um, we hope you will get sued because this one's different. You have done so much damage over the years and it gets escalated every time you do the damage. That it's, it climbs and climbs and climbs and climbs to where finally you could be sued. We actually don't want you to be sued. If you do spread misinformation, if you do cause harassment or threats towards somebody due to lying or whatever it is, we just hope that you don't get sued. We hope that the police investigate you and then press whatever charges are applicable for you doing that. So, yeah, we, we don't really give a shit about you getting sued or not. I don't know why it's always about a lawsuit with you guys. You guys don't need a lawsuit. You guys need to actually have the doxings that you do and perpetrate on people, the meddling that you do in these cases. We don't, we don't want it to be civilly handled at all. We want it to be handled by the police. I cannot wait this morning. Coffee Club and chat. Jessa loves the right, driving house.
I think you've got enough of this, and this topic is too fresh and early for people to even really break down yet. It's going to take a lot of fact-checking and a lot of thinking before people are at the right place with it. So let's try to move on. Because again, this isn't even the main reason to look at Betty's video. The main reason is that Betty has stated that she has leaked audio from Idaho. And again, I don't even know how she can be sure that it's not fake. There's already been verified faked audio. So faked audio that has been analyzed by professionals and proven to be absolutely fake from the night of this happening. And it's spread on social media. There is a YouTube creator that spread fake evidence in the Gabby Petito story. And I think maybe even the Kylie Rodney story, but there are several other stories than Petito and this story that this person spread fake evidence on to try to make it look like you should subscribe to them and give them money because they had access to this stuff, right? And so for her to get leaked audio and, and just be able to take it straight to YouTube and put it out, in my opinion, I don't even see how Betty has done anything to verify the audio is real or I don't think Betty has the um, skills required, the training required, or the experience required to be able to tell whether the audio is real or fake. Um, I don't think enough time has passed for the audio to be dubbed real or fake. Now, Menace, who is actually, um, has the experience and the training, um, to be able to determine whether certain audio is real or fake, has listened to the audio. And again, listening to the audio is not enough to determine whether it's real or fake, though his initial comparison of the audio to the, to the situation has him saying that from an initial look, uh, Lauren says Dylan heard what she thought was Kaylee playing with her dog. Then Kaylee or Zana says someone is here. Then Zana crying followed by a male voice. Then she saw a masked man walk toward her and the kitchen. Okay. So Lauren, that you, did you type it in the chat for me? You don't have to donate every time. Um, can you do me a solid? Did you, did you just get that from the affidavit? Is that where you just got that from, right? You called the FBI yesterday, Jack's mom? I think that's a good thing. And remember, any type of thing like this can be submitted to that website I was sharing a few days ago. It's in, it's in a stream from a few days ago. I'd have to, I think it's c3something.gov, but either way, that website I shared a few days ago is a great place to report these kind of things to. Um, I'll try to find the website and share it again before the end of the stream. But yeah, Lauren, uh, that's from the affidavit. Okay, Lauren just went into the affidavit. So I'm gonna put it on the screen and I'm gonna read it word for word to you, okay? Lauren just went into the affidavit, and this is what she read. Dylan heard what she thought was Kaylee playing with her dog. Then, Kaylee or Zana said, someone is here. Then, Zana's cried, followed by a male voice, then saw a masked man walk toward her and the kitchen. So, again, if you... Think of their home. What I was saying earlier is if you think that this happened in someone's home in the middle of the night, you might get mad at her for not calling the police. If you think that this happened in a hotel or a party house or a college home, a college dorm, a college home where, where multiple people are staying, partying at college, you would not think that they should have called the police, all right? Now, some of you will say, well, if you thought you heard that, why didn't you go into their room and check? These are the details we need before we can be mad at Dylan. If it's a common thing for, who was it, Kaylee, to play with her dog and then maybe make a crying noise because her dog bites her hand, she might not have went in to check. Maybe what she heard was normal based on their life. Maybe what she heard was abnormal. Before you can judge this person, you need to know the facts and the truth. I don't think we're going to get all of the facts and truth from the affidavit. I don't think we're going to get it from anything right now. It's just too early. I don't think we have enough information to be able 
to go in and judge what we have and say this Dylan person should be, we should be angry at them, we should hate them, or any of those details is my point. When so much, if you've followed these stories like I have a million times in the past, I, I know factually that even that paragraph could change by the time they get to court. Other details can emerge and completely change what we understand happened based on that paragraph from based on what we might hear when she gives testimony or when the police gives testimony or something, okay? That's the point I've been trying to make for a while now. I know not the best at making those kind of points. It's why I try not to cover true crime at that detail of a level. I try not to cover these kind of stories. I cover the YouTubers that exploit these stories and I cover um, a lot of other cringy stuff. But anyway, <laughs> you get me. Habits or the pings related to Brian Koberger uh, so they can explain to the court why they needed to arrest him. And, and, and there's literally no reason to be sitting here harping on this right now, Betty. You can accomplish just as much. This is another thing that I'm going to criticize you and your friends for. Every bit of your content is dragged out as far as it possibly can. It is constant. And now, dragging out content is fine if you're doing commentary, if you're doing a gameplay video, if you're doing a billion kinds of other content. When you're trying to deliver factual reporting information about this thing that's happened and tell people what they should think about this and this and this and deliver all the truth and this and this, that's the issue. Lauren says the affidavit is not all the info. It's what they need to secure warrants to arrest him. Well, exactly, exactly. And, and that's why I made that point, right? Um, just the affidavit alone isn't going to give us any kind of step-by-step -step or full truth. And that's why I said that, you know, we're not going to get the full truth from the affidavit. We're not going to get all the information that we need to judge Dylan from an affidavit. Now, Betty thinks you've got more than enough information to literally be angry at Dylan or to hate Dylan. Molly thinks you've got enough information to blame the sister and mother for raising a murmurer, that they should have some kind of blame on what this man did just for being his sister and mother. Dylan, who more than, I'd say, 50% of people out there consider this person a victim right now um because again this person was in bed <laughs> this person was at home in their bedroom i'll say it that way this person was not ever expecting a person to come in and do this they weren't thinking oh i need to call the cops if i hear this or i need to do that and, and also, based on where they live, they have a very different kind of um, situation, like home life, than I do, right? Now, back when I used to stay in my buddy's um, dorm room in Athens, Ohio, which is a college town, uh, it might have been a little more similar. I don't even know. Maybe not. But, but now, if I heard that kind of thing in the middle of the night, I would call the police immediately. But after I was rushing in to see what was going on in the house and all this... And again, the details are what matter. The, is it appropriate for, for someone to be in another adult's business if they have a room in this house and this other person has their own room? If it's more of an apartment situation, you wouldn't expect this person to even go knock on their door in the middle of the night and ask them if everything's okay. You wouldn't even expect that off of cr hearing crying and hearing what you think is a dog yipping or something, right? So anyway, I think I've exhausted the point. I just want to make sure you all understand what I'm saying. And the reason why we have to be so specific is because people like Betty and Molly and others are generating nothing but constant what they call facts and what we know is misinformation off of these details, right? This is not. So even this, this the, the segments that um, Dylan Mortensen that were put in there were Dylan Mortensen. There is a lot more to that statement than we uh, read yesterday. That was all. She just said there's a lot more. Okay, she's saying in general to the statement, as in, she's not saying there's more in the affidavit. She's saying that in general, 
Dylan's statement is much more than what is in the affidavit. I hope, Betty, because it didn't sound like that. Only the portion related to uh, buttoning up to show a good... good okay, they, they, okay, definitely. Let's skip ahead. ...work they did behind the scenes to make sure that... So here, I got an issue already. Where is the leaked fucking audio? Still a fucking fan. And if you just took your focus off of me, off of my life, my accomplishments, my daily tasks, you would probably already be successful. What the hell is this? What in the Sam fuck is this shit in the beginning of her shit? And how many individuals I have on my social media right now talking shit about my... Oh, hell no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I, sk I didn't see that. Okay. We got we to gotta go back to the beginning really quick. Okay. Betty's video starts with her normal, like, music, right? Which, for some reason, she plays copywritten music in the beginning. Pick one. You know? She's got a copywritten song. Pick. Blasting Pick. it. For literally... She's blasting copywritten music for literally two minutes and 50 some seconds. Followed by this. Now, I was, you know why I just rewound? I just rewound in her video because it says breaking Idaho leaked audio, right? But we were over in here and we hadn't heard the audio yet. And I'm, I just thought to myself, why is it that we're hearing about Dylan, but we haven't heard the leaked audio yet? So not only does she go on her Dylan rant before the leaked audio from what we've seen so far, she put this little thing in here. Still a fan. I can't even if you don't like me, but you keep watching my shit, you're still a fan. No, that's, that's, that's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. There is a thing called criticism and commentary. So do I have to be a fan if I want to criticize or commentate on your stuff? No, I don't have to be at all. Right now, if I'm obsessing, if I'm sitting here like, you know, grabbing clips of your BMW or something like that, and then harping about it on social media for three days. Yeah, you can make that statement in those situations. But if someone is delivering criticism while looking at the stuff that you're doing, they do not need to be a fan to criticize you. This is called narcissistic cope. This is you trying to cope with the fact that you've been exposed recently and that your shitty behavior when you try to do it isn't working anymore and in order for you to cope with the fact that you can't admit you're doing something wrong you can't admit that the criticism against you is correct out there what you do in order to cope with that is to convince yourself that the real reason people are criticizing you isn't because you're wrong it's not because you look like a scumbag for what you're doing it's not because you're exploiting these stories or anything it's because they're your super fans i've never been a boo boo betty fan so you really can't use that excuse with me. I only found out about you after busting Molly's fraud razor in the Dre situation and then finding out you hung out with her and seeing some of the egregious stuff you were doing. So again, you know, this is disgusting. And it really confirms that Betty is exploiting the people who lost their lives. You're clickbaiting this. If you want your video that you're doing to contain you addressing your haters, do it after you deliver this. Unless you're trying to use whatever it is you use to clickbait to try and deliver this message to people who will click your video. Because now, people that are coming in to see this instead are being delivered your narcissistic copium. I can't even begin to explain how many individuals I have on my social media right now talking shit about my message, about me, about how I look, about the individuals I surround myself with. Really sounds like this guy is um, more than likely upset over people trolling him or laughing at him. Everybody that posts on the internet are going to get people doing that because of the nature of social media. People are going to float by you. And they're going to decide that they don't like you or they don't, you know, they maybe just are going to troll for a second and then pop out and type something. They don't mean it. They don't know anything about you to make that judgment. 
That's why we don't care. That's why people will say, yeah, don't care when someone just goes to troll you. Care if someone criticizes. Care if you did something wrong and they're trying to communicate that to you. Don't give a shit, though, if someone just floats by talking shit or if they're lying or something like that or if they're making fun of your looks or whatever it may be, right? Because only unless you're in a situation where you've debunked somebody, criticized somebody, and they've come back and started to attack you because of that or because they're jealous of you or something, if they're outside of those situations, they really don't mean what they're saying, right? Even in those situations, they don't mean what they're saying. They're mad because you criticized them, and they're, they're trying to disguise to their audience that they're actually not and not let that seep through, and that's why they're doing those other things. But anyway, sounds like this guy's taking people that are trolling him, taking it seriously, and then whining about it on the mic. And so I have no clue why Betty is clickbaiting the people that lost their lives in this tragedy and using it to try to show people this video. Now, that's me saying that. Uh, I have no idea why. Unless I consider the fact that Betty most likely is pissed that we've been criticizing her lately. Because we've been slowly showing more and more of Betty's stuff and talking about Betty over the last... You know, this was done eight hours ago before this stream. And over the last couple weeks, we've progressively been showing a little bit more Betty as we go. So I'm almost inclined to think that Betty might be delivering this message to us along with some of her other haters. When I go out and look at people that are criticizing Betty, you see pretty much the same old crew of people that clip her and criticize her. And the only new kids on the block are really us. And it really does make me think it's possible this could be geared towards us, but let's let's hear the rest of it. Who don't follow me? Don't oh, this is on here every time she goes live. You've got to be kidding me! This is her normal intro, Jax. Jax, mom, do not tell me. I was trying to be nice, not thinking that this was her normal intro. You have got to be kidding me! You have got to be kidding me! <laughs> oh my God! So you're, you're telling me that Betty is so bothered by people criticizing her that she has put in the beginning of her intro this little message every time. Wow. Thank you, Robin. That is cringy. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, heavens. Oh, my goodness. I was trying to be nice to Betty and act like, you know... <laughs> She wasn't that cringy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. Really shows you how much I watch Betty's live streams, doesn't don't it? Don't like me and don't actually want to see me succeed. But you still here, homie. So you... I, I don't know even what this dude's saying, but you still here, homie. If you have haters who follow you around, I guess it would be a... Um, this would be a good message to haters. Again, though, I don't know why you would even be legitimizing what they're doing. Because by doing this kind of response like this, um, what you're doing is actually admitting that they have, uh, more, they're more than haters or that they could be right. Still a fucking fan. And if you just took your focus. Does anybody know what this guy does? Like, what is this guy's normal stick? Like, this guy. Where can I find the audio clip? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's what I want to know. I want to know where this, I want to know what this guy normally does so I can get context for why he's saying this. Cause I guess it could be legitimate to some degree, depending on what happened to him in Betty's case. Oh my God. It is not legitimate whatsoever. That's just hilarious. I have, I've never seen this person before ever. Oh, hold up. We got a little TikTok thing. Hold on. Whole C O L E L U I S. D A S L V A. That's his TikTok at sign C O L E L U I S D A S I L V A. That is the most confusing at sign I've ever heard in my life. Focus off of me, off of my life, my accomplishments, my daily tasks. You would probably already be successful. Betty probably thinks that that kind of commentary somehow applies to her 
criticizers or haters. That is hilarious. Put this out here. Stop sparing folks. Hello, somebody. Stop sparing folks. Nobody cared when your feelings was hurt. Nobody cared. Who, who's sparing anybody? What are you talking about? What? What? But it's a horrible message. Nobody cares about when your feelings are hurt, so you should hurt other people's feelings. Well, if you're a bad person, yeah. If you're just a negative person, yeah, sure. when you was pacing the flow. Nobody cared when you were sliding. Why would they care? Are you entitled for people to care? People that don't know you shouldn't care about that. Down the wall. Nobody cared when you were standing over there with a face full of tears. You had to suck it up, buttercup. But then when it comes to other folk feelings, here you are. Want to tiptoe around it. Want to avoid the elephant. Oh, okay. No, I agree with what she's saying now. Okay. No, this makes sense. Sure. I wouldn't be... Uh, tiptoeing around people's feelings but it didn't sound like that's what you were saying in the room don't want i don't want to upset anybody i don't want to disturb the peace see i'm looking for the damn audio guys so that you know what i'm doing i'm looking for the leaked audio i'm thinking that i skipped the linked audio before she started talking are you but but honestly like i guess we didn't skip the leaked audio. orange betty channel on you like it was weird her life since we asked the tough yeah we didn't skip it she has not played the leaked audio yet. But when you're on here, just as angry as me than the people that are pissed off that I said something. Ooh. Pissed off that you said something? I, most people are just, you know, cringing at you. I, I'd say there's few people pissed off about what you say or do. I, I think they're more like face palming, you know? Sue me. Sue me. You gotta sue me, man. I, I, you know, hopefully one day someone will. I cannot affidavit is thorough. And it would be a person who's gone through one of these tragedies and had you guys meddle in their, their lives. That's who would sue you. There will be multiple affidavits that will be coming out associated with this case in support of whatever they are claiming to have happened. This is a probable cause affidavit. Is it complete? It is complete for the probable cause. Wow. I swear the more they talk, the dumber they constantly sound. Where's the leaked audio so I can go offline? I got to pick my kid up in like an hour and a half. Doing it and the behaviors of the criminals when they were committing the crimes. So it kind of opens your eyes. Jesus. What they're learning from the this morning is because of that affidavit. Put Brian Koberger in front of their house again the next morning. Oh my god, I don't care. I don't want to hear it from you. I don't want to hear it from someone that lies all the time and would constantly morph information to fit their narrative. I want to hear it from someone who is neutral in this, who literally gains nothing from reporting it to me, more than just doing their job, more than doing what they're doing. I don't care. Jesus. Saw this. Did she text them? How? Again, okay. So we can ignore her cringy little butt hurt Betty videos at the at the beginning of her stuff. Okay, we can ignore that. The video really starts where we thought it started, which is like right after she plays the subscribe thing, which is where I started it earlier. Again, I'd never even seen these cringy little videos before, so that's uh interesting. Now we listen to it about up to here which is a good 20 or 30 or something minutes, and she still hasn't played the leaked audio. It's an hour and 40 minutes in. Are you shitting me? So she really did just clickbait this shit. Why would you put it... Did she... Is it fake? Is the audio fake? I'm going to put it on two times speed because, you know, she claims this is audio from that night. If you really did have audio from that night, why is it an hour and 40 minutes in to this stream? Why? Uh, no, I, I have it on. I just can barely see it. I've, I've reorganized my, uh, let me show you. Oh, no. Okay, I can't click that right now, or it might end my stream. 
Let me show you my new little setup here. I've got my layout changed. So this is what my layout looks like now. So like, see how the chat's a lot smaller. I'm going to change it. I've got to reorganize OBS to change it, but normally my chat's like this. The reason why I, I couldn't see some of the stuff you guys were saying is because this is covering up the chat. I'm only seeing this small bit of chat tomorrow. I'm going to change it though. I'm going to put it back like this tomorrow so that I can see more of it. But yeah, that's why, that's why I wasn't seeing what you guys were saying. Later, she says the audio is from 112 King Road. Yeah, that's the actual address of the home where it happened, I believe. It is common in general. Oh, I'm in the wrong room. Let me get back to general. Um, Bullhorn Betty plays the audio at 140. Not sure if she played it before that as well. If it's real, and the cops did say they had audio from a ring doorbell nearby, then it's literally the young guy's final moments of his life and appears as though he maybe walked in on Brian doing what he was doing or woke up when he was doing it. It's really sad and horrific. If it's fake, the fact that these YouTubers are using the kid's final moments for monetary gain is disgusting. Like I said, I know it's played at the 1 in 40 mark, but I don't know if it's played earlier than that, so be careful because it's extremely triggering. In my opinion, real or fake, they're monetizing the kid's final moments if it's real. It just makes it that much more sickening. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't want the I don't want the timestamp for the audio. I'm not gonna play it. Not gonna play it. If you want to try to pursue Bullhorn Betty's claimed leak audio, Menace says it's at an hour and thirty nine minutes in this video. Um, I'll go ahead and tweet a timestamp for you if you want to go to my Twitter at Unirock TV and watch it. Unfortunately, if you do, you're going to be giving Be uh, Betty a view, but you know what? It's all good. So this is the timestamp to Betty's claimed audio from the night of the Moscow slayings. She plays it almost two hours into her stream, clickbaiting everyone to watch and wait for it during her live. She is abhorrent. Okay. So I went ahead and tweeted that out for you. If you guys want to see it, you're more than welcome to go. Watch it and see it yourself. Jesus Christ. I know people have reported it. My only suggestion would be don't file the report if you're going to until you're at the timestamp of the audio because while you are able to upload certain kinds of things like this to YouTube, you are not supposed to do certain things with this kind of audio. Betty has done every wrong thing that you're supposed to do as a YouTuber if you're going to provide people with this kind of clip. She's done everything wrong. Let's not even talk about YouTube in the terms of service. Let's just talk about ethically or let's talk about when it comes to her reporting or coverage of this. When you watch a news broadcast, they are neutral. They report to you everything that's happening. The reason why we don't look at the news as predatory even though we do look at some news stations as predatory, humanity has always had people that report the news and it's never been looked down on or banned from society. It's actually a right of society to be able to talk about the things that are going on around us. We have a protection, a right to press, which means we have a right to be able to talk about the things that happen around us. It's a basic human right. So... Why is it that we don't look at the news every night reporting Brian Enton reporting this kind of stuff as predatory, as wrong, as bad? Why don't we cancel Brian Enton or anything like that? Because Brian Enton is going to report to you a story no matter whether the story is going to be big or small. Brian Enton is going to report the story regardless of whether the story... Um, he's going to report to you something mundane that happened tonight or he might give you the most exciting thing ever 
All that's going to matter is that it happened when Brian Inton brings you a part of a story. The reason people like Molly and the rest are exploiting these stories and making money off of these tragedies in some of the most disgusting ways possible is because they do not do that. That's not something that's going to happen from them. They're not going to cover stories, bring you content based on a concept that relates to the content. The concept they relate to is how much money they're going to make. It's why they only cover stories that are controversial that are big, that are covered by the media. They don't cover some random ass thing from over here, random little murmur that happened over here, a random little thing over here. It's always got to be the biggest thing. And when they go in to cover the biggest thing, they all of a sudden have uh, all of these details they get wrong and that they lie about that just so happen to make the story very exciting or very outrageous or make you angry. All of these things are are there because they're the things that cause you to click, watch, and to help you get into a state where you're willing and more likely to give them money. So I'm going to end the stream there. Um, I wanted to cover LB and Justin's coverage of this. We'll get to that on my next stream. Theoretically speaking, I'd like to do another stream later tonight and cover Justin and LB and what they've been saying and doing around this story, but we... If we can't get it uh, tonight, the only, you know, I can't promise you I'll be back tonight because I got some family stuff I got to do. So um, it might be tomorrow. The thing that really matters here is that what we're seeing from Molly tells me they could start to protest the family members of Brian in the future. They're laying, Justin and Molly are laying the groundwork to protest family members in the future. I also think it's a possibility that Betty or Molly or Justin might protest the witness, the one that saw everything. Remember how there's a small clip in Betty's stream where Betty says she only wants like certain kinds of botherings to the witness. She doesn't want the witness to be bothered about everything, just certain things, right? You shouldn't want the witness bothered at all. But I think the reason she said that is because it's possible we're going to see them choose a target for a protest or choose a target for them to go out on the ground and do their normal thing to try and go in and play those games. And if not, we will see them continue to demonize I uh, the people they're demonizing. I believe they're going to keep doing it. They're going to find other people to demonize and they're going to we know factually they're at least going to be doing their same old tricks through this whole story. So. You know, keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on what's going on. If uh, you're following the story and um, you're in my Discord, Menace and Lauren and Navy and everybody, um, keep me updated on these tiny revelations from the story. Again, I'm not going to be covering this story in any, like I with Gabby, I did a little bit of a documentary kind of video on Gabby Petito. I'm not doing that in this story, so I'm not going to follow the details of the story very closely. I'm going to be following the YouTubers and social media influencers that are out there clickbaiting, lying, spreading misinformation, and trying to ingrain themselves into stories so that they can make money off of them. And we're going to be, um, we're going to keep going because we are getting a uh, very, uh, we're, we're making a lot of headway. Um, like I said in a stream a couple days ago with Navy, I don't think it's us that has made uh, the, this movement uh, or this, this thing happen where the police and the, the, the local uh, you know, localities actually stand up against these tragedy pimps. I don't think it's us as a channel. I think it's us as a community. I think everybody in the community from the viewer to the creators to new new uh, posters, new people that are posting to uh, people that are tweeting, leaving comments. I think everybody getting their opinion out there, everybody standing up and saying, we, uh, we actually aren't going to stand by and just watch you guys do this. We'll at least laugh at you for do it, being so desperate that you can't make any other kind of content on the platform, any other commentary or any other type of video that you have to choose this to actually be able to make money. And we're going to laugh at you for how gross and disgusting it is. All right. We need to get people off their platform. 
says Sunshine. Well, unfortunately, that's not a decision I get to make. All I can do is give YouTube the clips and give them what's happening. And then if YouTube chooses not to act, the only thing we can do after that is to shine a light on it and maybe send it to the media and see what we can do to maybe get the ones at least like Betty and Molly and Justin that docks and harass and LB that vet bash and lie, at least get them reported to the platforms. And um, we are making some progress with our reports and with that happening, but we still have work to do. And it's hard to do when you're editing, going live and trying to hold meetings where we get together and we keep updating everybody on the, getting the new clips together, adding it to the report, getting the new report sent in and trying to get YouTube to listen. YouTube is very hard to work with. I'll tell you that. Very hard to work with. Freedom says, because of all the drama, I have canceled all memberships but yours. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, of course, the only thing that any membership does around here is just helps me keep making content. And, you know, I like making gaming content, funny content. This is my main content, along with Unirock too. But, you know, I do appreciate those of you that support us. And, uh, you know, there are great creators out there. There really are. There, there are great true crime creators too. It's just they're, they're harder to find. All right, guys, I, I, I don't want to get offline. You can tell. I want to stay live for a few more hours. I can't keep doing that, though. I got to get back to the uploads. Got to get back to the next live streams. And I got to do some stuff with my family. If you do want to support me, uh, you can join like Freedom did. You can like and subscribe. You can super chat like many people have done tonight. Or paypal.me forward slash unirock. Patreon.com forward slash unirock. Or Snapchat. It's not Snapchat. It's Cash App. Money sign unirachel on cash app all of those methods are in the description and for any of you that, thank you very much it does help out and uh, keeps us going keeps us chugging along um now the video that we uploaded to unirock 2 is me and navy reacting to some stuff involving betty it is fucking hilarious it is funny and navy was on point navy was on oh, point so jump over there to Unirock 2 for me and make sure you watch this video. Make sure you leave a comment on it. Make sure you like it. Um, it's only been up for a couple hours, a few hours now with the live stream being out there. But yeah, there's some there's some good stuff here. And I added in some memes. Oh gosh, let me sh the funniest one is I, I animated Betty creeping outside of um the uh so for the I animated Betty creeping outside. Uh, with a pair of binoculars peeping in on the apartment. Let me see if I can find it because it's hilarious. And then me and Navy are going back and forth and I animated what Navy was saying and I animated what I was saying and it turned out pretty funny. Oh, come on. Where is it? You guys have to see this little animation. I know it's right around here somewhere. I should have rendered it because it was really good. It's where she talks about she's out in front of the... Uh, uh, apartment and I put a pair of binoculars in her hand and I make her creep up on it. It's freaking hilarious. It's probably, oh wait, I think I just saw it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, take a look at this. This is funny. This is from Unirock 2. This video's up right now. So after the stream, if you want, go watch it, but take a look. Not even that she saw him, it's maybe. So it leads us to her being live in front of his apartment. And then I said to myself, why? Why is she live at his apartment? What is she trying to show here? You have any theories, Navy? <laughs> I think I think what it is. So I added a whole bunch of little memes and funny stuff in. So go check it out because that's what I do when I upload. I, I try to animate in a bunch of funny stuff. Love you guys. You guys rock. Appreciate you. Do not harass anyone that I've mentioned in this video. Keep an open mind. Make sure that you're looking at any of these stories. You consider stage of the story, the amount of information that's out there. And fight against misinformation. Make sure that you understand that a breaking story will change. As a story is documented, as an investigation happens, more information is gathered, the timeline changes, what happened changes. And make sure that you're cognizant of that. Don't let anybody get you whipped up into where you decide to start acting like a bullhorn Betty or a Molly, a bad person, going around harassing people that are getting going through extreme tragedies because guys when you're in a tragedy if you've ever been in one 
It's hard to think. It's hard to act. It's hard to decide what the right thing to do is when your life is on the line or when someone else's life is in the line. It's hard to even, in a split second, decide what you can do to help. So make sure you keep all of that in mind. These are the most difficult situations we deal with in life. And for Betty and Molly to act like they're just, you know, the most perfect people out there who would make every great and right decision if they were in that, they would be the first ones to be hiding under the bed and crying. They would, you know, if anyone would have jumped out the window and ran away and not called 911, it would have been Betty and damn Molly. I don't even want to hear it. I'm out of the 5,000 G. Peace. Unirock, uh, it's optional. Thank you. See you tomorrow or see you later tonight. Unirock 2, go watch the video. Brand new video.